What's up, everybody? We're back here in the cave, but we're close to the reveal because we got the last piece of the puzzle here for the in-home studio. So hopefully in the next week or two, whenever John can get down here, we can finish this up so it's not looking like I'm kidnapped somewhere in somebody's basement. But we are here to talk about some uh, basement type stuff, if you ask me. Because this hearing today, well, I've actually, my tune has changed just a bit since my initial watch and listen to of this hearing, which I always think is kind of cool as you can reflect a little bit, think about it a little bit more, talk about it a little bit more. Um, and I actually can see some interesting aspects of this. There's so many different angles to this case and different angles to the way that you can look at what happened with Ms. Becky, what happened with Alec Murdoch, what happened with the evidence, with the trial, the financial stuff, um, SLED being involved in this and the juror questions and all of this stuff, right? So we're going to listen through today. Um, it's going to be impossible to do this in an hour. So buckle up because we might have a bit of a longer stream tonight. Um, I just got home not too long ago, flew in this morning, left at 6 a.m., got back just in time to take Maverick to basketball practice dinner, bed, prayers, all of that stuff done. Kids are down. So now it's time to hang out with you guys and talk about this because this is what I watched for the majority of the plane ride along with that Netflix show, American Nightmare or something, which is wild. Maybe we'll talk about that on another day. But the majority of my time was spent on this and really watching through, dissecting this, analyzing it, thinking about it. Um, and we're going to play... So you know what to, to look forward to. We're going to play Jersey so we can hear how the judge questioned all the jurors. It was very similar. Then we're going to recap most of the other jurors. Then we're going to listen to some arguments between Putin and the judge and Waters and the judge. Then we're going to watch the entirety of Miss Becky's testimony. We're going to watch most of Rhonda's testimony, most of Juror 741's testimony. I'm going to summarize some of the arguments because they're basically summarizing the day. And we're going to play the entirety, not the entirety, actually, most of the judge's decision. Okay. So we've got a lot to get through. And I really want your opinion and questions on a lot of this stuff to see if we um, see it the same, see it differently. You as lay people, for the most part, there are some lawyers in here as well that could be on a jury. We're going to talk about... Um, how you can be influenced by jurors, how you can be influenced by other things, how you may be influenced by more than one thing. We're going to talk about what prejudice actually means. And we're going to talk about why decisions like this are made. Because it's not always the simplest, straightest line to the answer. And we're going to discuss what that actually means today. Because a lot of what we learn here is based on multiple angles and multiple people's discussions and perceptions about what happened and what they heard and saw and did in this case. So hit that like button because I'm for sure going to forget to remind you throughout the video. Maybe other people in the chat will. And if you haven't subscribed, this is your first video with us. It'd be a wild one to join us on today, but welcome. We're here. John said, yo, nerd, sweet beanie, send me one. Maybe we'll put this on the list of gifts and you'll have a chance to win one. It is freezing. I came home to Clearwater and it's in the 40s. Thought I was supposed to be hot here in Florida. Thank you, Azam, for gifting a membership. Francis as well. Thank you for gifting a membership. Uh, Karen said, or Cares Strong says, Miss Rhonda's my new favorite. Sorry, Peter, you dropped to number two. She was cool, right? She was cool. And we're going to hear from her and so many more today, but we're going to start with Jersey. Z. The judge opened up with some remarks saying, thank you so much for your service. You guys did nothing wrong. You served honorably. I love that the judge did this at the beginning and at the end to make sure that jurors are not afraid of jury service. Let me know in the chat if you feel even less like you want to be a juror after watching this because I have a feeling that that's exactly what a lot of people felt. Uh, Mama Hype said, spend the day with EDB. Great to end with the lawyer you know. Thank you, Mama. Let's get into, ooh, love, gifting 50 memberships. Starting it out with a bang. Make sure you got your gifted memberships turned on because we are rolling into this hearing. 
there's our guy, Alec Murdoch, who did not have a great day today. It's been a tough, tough couple of years for him. Um, tough to feel bad for somebody that has created a tough couple of years for so many people. Um, but one of the overarching themes of this is going to be, what do we want to do as a society? Do we care about everybody and all citizens? Do we care about the rule of law? Or do we just care about making the bad guys suffer? Because the bad guy's suffering here, no doubt about that. And he's going to suffer more. So how do we want that done? Right? And it's an open discussion. It's fine to disagree. Let's not go at each other's throats here if we do disagree. If somebody thinks he should get a new trial, let's be open-minded and think about that. If somebody thinks, no, we think the judge made the right decision based on this standard, and we think the evidence was so overwhelming that we don't need to, that it's okay that there's some smoke here, that it's okay that Becky did things she very clearly should not have done, well, let's discuss it. That's the point of this channel. All right, here we go, starting with Jersey. Jersey, uh, I will ask you some questions, and there are no right or wrong answers. Uh, the truth is, uh, is what I seek, and uh, that is the truth of what you experience in relation to these questions at the State versus Murdoch trial. The truth is what this judge seeks. Uh, closed captions are not available, but if you want to click them on your video watching me, then you can. But the judge says she is seeking the truth. And that's important when we talk about what happens at the end of Jersey's testimony. None of your answers are right or wrong. We're just seeking the truth. And I agree with her. That's exactly what we should be here with. Or for, I should say. Nobody really wins and loses here. Well, Murdoch loses, I guess. You rendered a verdict on March the 2nd, 2023. That verdict was read in open court by the four-person of the jury. And then uh, the court said this. Madam Four Lady and members of the jury, if that is your verdict of each and every juror, let it be known by raising your hand. The transcript then indicates that the jurors complied. The jury was individually polled, and each was asked, was that your verdict? Each juror answered yes. Each juror was then asked, is that still your verdict? And each juror answered yes. Was that an accurate statement about your verdict at that time? Yes, ma'am. Right. So, and again, the reason I want to show you one all the way through is they asked very similar questions. There was an additional question added later. We'll talk about that to some of the other jurors, but very similar questions to every juror. Was that your verdict at that time? Yes. Okay. That's important because she did in fact believe Alec Murdoch was guilty. And that was in fact her vote. Was your verdict based entirely on the testimony, evidence, and law presented to you in this case? Yes, ma'am. Was it based entirely, and that's an important word, entirely on the evidence and the law presented to you in this case? The answer was yes. Every juror said that. Every juror answered yes to these two questions, by the way. Um, so that's important. I think that's something if you're on the no prejudice, no new trial, you know, no body, no crime side, then that's an important factor to you because she based it solely on the evidence and law at the trial. And this is where the judge at the end kind of sees there's some ambiguity in her answer. Some of this is convoluted, could be read different ways, because that's a really important question number two, which is the whole point and why the judge wanted that to be one of the questions. Did you hear Ms. Becky Hill make any comment about this case before your verdict? Yes, ma'am. If yes, what did Ms. Hill say? To watch his actions. To watch his actions. What else? To watch him closely. To watch him closely. Anything else you remember? There it is, but I can't remember. Okay, that's fine. Uh, and uh, was your verdict on March the 2nd, 2023, in any way, with any com uh, influenced in any way with any communications by the clerk of court, Becky Hill, in this case? Yes, yes, please. All right. Was your okay, so the judge fumbled over the question a little bit. It was a little bit of a confusing question, but at the end of the day, the question was, did Becky Hill's comments that she said to you influence in any way your verdict? And the reason, in my opinion, you put that pair, that, not that paraphrase, what is it called? Prepositional phrase? I don't even know. In any way. 
Did it affect it in any way? If that answer is yes, I'm sorry to the people in the chat that are going to disagree with me. Um, and again, we can respectfully disagree as we go through this, but because her answer was yes to that, they could have stopped the hearing right there. If the judge felt her credible, obviously. But at the end, it sounds like maybe the judge didn't find her credible because there was some ambiguity. If there was ambiguity, why not let her clear it up? But in my opinion, if a juror who has literally nothing to gain from this, right? And I know there are conspiracy theories that Murdoch's paying her in the background. Um, she's a plant, whatever. If that's true, okay, fine. I don't see any evidence of that. I promise you this judge, that's not why she made her ruling because there has been no evidence presented of that. Those conspiracy theories, if they are true, nobody knows about them and can prove them in a, a court of law. So that is not the reason the judge made the call that she did. But outside that, I have no reason to find this juror any less credible than any other juror. Frankly, she's the one that the public's going to hate the most, I would think. So she has the most fear of anything to say this. And when she answers that question, yes, we know that comments were made. Other jurors say Becky Hill made certain comments. But as soon as this juror said yes, hook, line, and sinker, we cannot be having trials like this. And I still firmly believe if I hook Eric Bland up to a lie detector test, he's a personal injury plaintiff's lawyer like myself. He does some you know, legal malpractice, obviously, as well. But if I told him the clerk of the court was going back there and telling jurors, man, this defendant that you're suing for millions of dollars just doesn't have that money. I really feel bad for him. The plaintiff's faking her injuries a little bit. Watch her arm as she picks it up. She didn't tear her shoulder in this accident. If she was making little comments like that, and it ended up the verdict com comes out a much lower amount than he wanted, I think he'd have a problem with this. I know I would. Even if it only affected one juror. We just can't have a system like this. That's my opinion. Now, there's more, but that was the, the big thing that if they said that, even under this judge's standard, my opinion, it's over. But the judge, of course as the finder of fact, has to find that fact credible. Or verdict influenced in any way by the communications of the clerk of court in this case? Yes, ma'am. And how was it influenced? To me, it felt like she made it seem like he was already guilty. All right. And well, I understand that. But... She made it seem like he was already guilty. And again, we're going to build on this as we go throughout this hearing. When we hear what Miss Becky says and the questions the judge has for Miss Becky. But this juror is like, yeah, based on Becky Hill's comments, he was guilty. That, that's the tenor of the remarks she made. Did that affect your finding of guilty in this case? Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, yes, ma'am. All right. And uh, I understand that. Uh, that. That's the tenor of the remarks she made. Did that affect your finding of guilty in this case? Yes, ma'am. So I'll just tell you, if I'm doing jury selection, yes, Nirvana, he was. If I'm doing jury selection and a potential juror gives me an answer like this, that's basically like, she's out, it's over. I don't care what the other side does. They can't rehabilitate this juror, in my opinion. She should be struck. I don't care if she says, well, actually, yeah, I could, I could put all that aside and be fair and impartial. She's already answered the question. It influence her guilty verdict, period, the end. A person's life is on the line. Forget about who that person is. We have to forget about who that person is because nobody likes Alec Murdoch. I get that. But it could be, if this is the rule of law and this is how it works and Becky Hill is still the clerk in Colleton County and this is how it works and she wants to keep dropping these hints, but oh, it doesn't affect all the jurors. It only affects one of them to make sure somebody maybe you love or know is guilty and their life is on the line, this is how the law works. And to me, when this juror gave that answer, she is not rehabilitatable. But the judge continues to ask questions and rehabilitates her, basically, and swings her back into a position where the judge can find her not credible. And basically... I, I mean, to me, she disregards this testimony. She has to disregard this testimony to say it did not affect the outcome of this trial. All right. 
fra BAE's. Summer, I mean... Those are my, my questions are submitted to the juror. Uh, are there... I think this is a, something a lot of people are going to agree with and a lot of people are going to disagree with. Any uh, reactions, further questions, and so forth? If there are, and you would like to voice them, I can ask the juror to retire to the jury room. Uh, just tell me whether I need to do that. All right, sir. Take the juror to the jury room, please. Um, the affidavit that was given by this particular juror, uh, paragraph 10, uh, said, I questions about Mr. Murdoch's guilt, but I vote guilty because I felt pressured by the other jurors. Uh, we would. He's going to bring up her affidavit that said she voted guilty because she felt pressured by the other jurors. This is great lawyering by Creighton Waters and the AG's office. If there's impeachment that this juror has already said something else affected her jury, or affected her verdict. This is exactly what he should do. He did a great job. He found it. He brought it up. And there you go. Uh, request uh, an inquiry as to that, which is how uh, when this motion was filed, she expressed uh, the basis for her verdict, uh, which obviously the answer is a little different now. Uh, so we would request uh, a brief inquiry from the court as to that specific issue. Thank you, Your Honor. Uh, Your Honor, as to two things. The first thing is, he is correct. She gave an affidavit. Um, we would uh, ask your honor to let her read her affidavit to refresh her memory of, she said other things, they're very detailed in here. We'd ask you to, and let me hand up to the court, um, a copy of her affidavit. And ask you to have her read it before. Um... And this is a very interesting back and forth now. The judge is, starts to act like Harpulian opened the door to use the affidavit when really Waters wants to question on the affidavit and Harpulian's just like, no, I want her to refresh her recollection, but it's an interesting back and forth. And the judge puts... Harpulian in his place. And Paula said, I can already tell that I have an unpopular opinion here tonight. Love the judge, her comments, her logic, and her judgment. So I like this judge. I do like this judge. I think the way she went about this entire hearing was very interesting. The way she asked her questions were very, it were in a specific way for a specific reason, in my opinion, to elicit specific answers. But just wait till the end, because when I bring it all together and talk about why and some of the things that have kind of changed in my mind about my initial reaction, um, I think it's going to be an interesting discussion. I really do. Kathy S. said, Peter, you're making this tough for me because I feel he's guilty. It's not about his guilt or innocence right now, Kathy, honestly. Honestly, everybody that was there and that, you know, read the whole transcript and saw this trial and, you know, is involved here thinks the evidence is overwhelming. Everybody except Dick and, and Griffin. So it's very likely that he goes and gets convicted again. So it's not about his guilt or innocence right here. It's did the process fail him? Did Becky insert herself to a level that prejudiced Alec Murdoch and didn't give him a fair shake? That's the question. Before you that, anyway. uh, what I have here, uh, Mr. Waters, for the record, Mr. Waters, what I've been handed for the record is something affidavit of juror now referred to as Z. Uh, it was taken August the 14th, 2023. Uh, it was uh, sworn before Holly Miller, paralegal for Mr. Harputlin, uh, and he would like me to give that to uh, uh, the juror and ask her to read it and then ask her about it. I'm inclined to do that, but I want to hear from you first. Uh, Your Honor, uh, again, if, if they want to refresh the recollection, that's fine with the state. Um, but uh, so we have no objection. Very good. Uh, it will be done. Your Honor, also, we would ask that you not ask the question that um, that Mr. Waters asked you to ask because it violates Rule 606B, which provides upon an inquiry of the validity of a verdict or indictment, a juror may not testify to the effect of anything upon that or any other juror's mind or emotions. What was the question he asked? The, 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 if you look at that affidavit, paragraph 10, Your Honor. paragraph 10. Yeah, it's in the very affidavit. She said she was, influenced, she was influenced by other jurors. Yeah, I'm going to ask her about that. I'm going to give her the affidavit, and then I'm going to question her about it. And we would, for the record, indicate that we object to that under 606B. Your Honor, from our perspective, uh, she's put an issue. You don't want to ask me to have her look at this affidavit, but you're telling me I can't question her about it? I deny, uh, I deny that objection. Your Honor, if it's something that's inadmissible, you should not ask her about it. Well, you want me to admit it. <laughs> Here's where the confusion happens. It's like, he's like, judge, whether it's in her affidavit or not, she could say the sky is falling, I have proof. It doesn't mean you should ask her about it in this hearing because it's not relevant, or it's inadmissible for this reason because it's entering the province of the jury and why she made the decision she made. And then the judge is like, well, you want me to, you want me to enter this into evidence and I'm going to ask questions about it. He's like, no, I just wanted her to read it to refresh her recollection, which is exactly what Creighton Waters said. It was just kind of a funny back and forth where it was like a miscommunication.
and have her uh, examine it. I want you to have her read it to refresh her memory. Equivalent, Mr. Talbot, the equivalent of that things that I'm not going to take time to quibble about. My ruling is, pursuant to your request, I am going to allow the juror to examine her affidavit, and then I'm going to question her about it. That's my ruling. Your objection is overruled. My opinion, if she was the judge on this trial, it would have gone a lot faster. A lot faster. Uh, Scott said, if Jersey was swayed by Becky to guilty, then she wouldn't feel pressure and deliberations to guilty. She would have already made up her mind. I think that's a good point. Here's the problem. My opinion, okay? She said Becky Hill affected her guilty verdict. I'm just, Scott, I, I get that we're going to disagree on this. But if it was you there and I was your lawyer, I would do everything I could to burn this place to the grass. That's a horrible, a horrible uh, quote I was going to use or phrase I was going to use. I would do everything I could to show how having a clerk of court who's supposed to be an unbiased party who has clearly made up her mind that this guy's guilty and did things and dropped hints that he was guilty and, and even just one juror was affected by that and even a, even 1% more likely to vote guilty because of something that had nothing to do with the evidence or presentation of the evidence or arguments or law that happened in the courtroom where it's supposed to happen. There's no way that if I was your lawyer, I wouldn't fight this exact way. And I think you would see it differently if a clerk of court did this to you or somebody you knew or somebody you love. And that's the way I think about it. That's the way I think of the law. Got a lot of clients I care about family members, people, citizens, you guys, that this needs to be done the right way so people don't get railroaded, even if it's just one out of 12 jurors. And we're not saying that because of this, Alec Murdoch should get to go home. We're saying line up a new jury. Let's waste the dollars and money again. Waste is probably not the right word. And let's do it the right way. That's all I'm saying. For the record, I just want to note, Your Honor. Just you you noted 606? I hear you noted. And in no way waiving anything or opening any doors by asking you to let her that's examine. That's not a higher court than me to decide. He's well, right. I understand that. And that's why I want to make sure when they read this transcript, there's no confusion. I'm not asking you to put that into evidence. I'm asking you to well, let the in the world, I can question the juror about something and not put it into evidence. You can't have your cake and eat it too, Mr. Harper. You could have been very satisfied with the answers that were already given. But you have chosen to ask, to ask about this. Request. Uh, deny. He, he didn't, though. He, he literally didn't, right? Am I taking crazy pills? He did not ask for more questions of this jury, juror. Waters asked for more questions from this juror about the contradiction in her affidavit. And he is right. Creighton Waters is right. The judge should ask those questions. But somewhere along the way, I think the judge got confused into saying, into thinking that Harputlian wanted additional questions. I think Harputlian was more than satisfied with her answers. So that was a weird one to me. Weren't there parameters on Miss Becky's influences on the jury? Jurors. It had to create prejudice. They had to prove prejudice. Jenna, could the juror get in trouble for lying under oath? So we talk about perjury a million times. Um, this would nowhere near come up to the level of perjury. Because again, she's saying that was her verdict. Now, what was influencing her verdict? What did she think at the time? Like. There's no handbook on being a juror. So does she know that what the clerk of court says that she's not supposed to talk to the clerk of court? Is that something that's considered inside the courtroom or the courthouse? I can see why that would be confusing. So I don't think this comes anywhere near perjury for this juror. Um, I think anybody would have a really hard time proving she lied under oath. Netwoman, 2024, the year jurors have to testify after trials. Wild. Can we look forward to evening lives? Because every live is awesome. And it also gives a chance for the rewatch crew to see an actual live. Thank you, Peter. I do love bringing in groups that don't get to be on the normal afternoon lives. So welcome, everybody. And I appreciate everybody being here. And thank you, Netwoman, for the welcome. Your Honor, all the time we ask witnesses Mr. to examine Mr. the prior statement. Mr. Clinton, I'm in my room. Please take your seat. All right. Bring me your Z. And I know people love when you got the place. He has that kind of personality, so he has to understand yeah. that. First paragraph, of course, is a statement that you were a juror in the case. 
Second paragraph says, toward the end of the trial after the president's day break, but before Mr. Murdoch testified, the clerk of court, Rebecca Hill, told the jury, quote, not to be fooled, unquote, by the evidence presented by Mr. Murdoch's attorneys, which I understood to mean that Mr. Murdoch would lie when he testifies. Uh, is that uh, what your recollection is of that statement? Yes, ma'am. Uh, is there anything in the statement that uh, on reflection you think is not correct? No, ma'am. All right. Number three, she also instructed the jury to, quote, watch him closely, quote, immediately before he testified, including, quote, look at his actions, quote, and, quote, look at his movements, quote, which I understood to mean he was guilty. Uh, is that an accurate uh, uh, recitation of your view of the matter? Yes, ma'am. Uh, immediate number four, paragraph four. Immediately after he testified, the foreperson said Mr. Murdoch was cr crying on cue. Uh, is that an accurate statement of uh, what you uh, saw in, and heard? Yes, ma'am. Five, the foreperson criticized the former foreperson for handing Mr. Murdoch a box of tissues when he was crying on the stand while testifying about his murdered son. She told the jury we cannot interact with Mr. Murdoch because that's what the defense wants us to do. Uh, do you still stand by that recitation of the, that conversation? Yes, ma'am. Right. Number six, the jury frequently discussed the case during breaks before deliberation. Is that uh, correct? Yes, ma'am. All right. Number seven, toward the end of the trial, Ms. Hill came into the jury room a lot. Is that your recollection? Yes, ma'am. Ms. Hill and the full person had private conversations on multiple occasions. The full person would tell the bailiff that she needed to speak with Ms. Hill. Ms. Hill would arrive and then she and the full person would go to another room for a private conversation. The conversations typically lasted five to 10 minutes. The full person never said anything about the content of the conversation. For example, she never communicated logistical information after these conversations. This happened two or more times, more frequently towards the end of the trial. Is that still your recollection of the interaction? Yes, ma'am. Nine. When we began deliberations, Mr. Ms. Hill told us this shouldn't take us long, quote, and if we deliberated past 11 p.m., we would be taken directly to a hotel. We had driven from our homes that morning and were not prepared to stay overnight. Additionally, smokers on the jury asked to be allowed to take smoke breaks. They were told they could not smoke until after the deliberations were complete. Did you hear that? Yes, ma'am. Including the business about the smokers? Yes, ma'am. All right. Number 10, I had questions about Mr. Murdoch's guilt, but voted guilty because I felt pressured by the other jurors. Is that an accurate uh, statement about uh, your verdict? Yes, ma'am. The other hard part is about that, right? She absolutely answered yes, so I get it. And I get the ambiguity here, but we'll talk about, you know, what she does later. But what's interesting is it's like, um, I, again, I'm terrible at these one-liners and jokes, but it's like, um, I can't remember what it's like. What color are clouds? White. You know, what color is this cup? White. What color are teeth? White. What do cows drink? Milk. It's like, no, cows drink water. You know, and she's like, did you say this in your affidavit? Is that correct? Yes. You say this, yes. You say this, yes. You say this, yes. And then paragraph 10, she just says, yes. Now, it's in her affidavit. So we can assume it's actually true. And Daniela said, why didn't she put the fact that Miss Becky influenced her in her affidavit? And I agree with you, Daniela. And I think that's the point. And that's the ambiguity the judge relied on. And I think finding that this juror was not credible. What do you guys think? Do you guys think this juror, juror number, juror letter Z, was credible or no? Kevin, did the judge ask if Becky Hill was the only thing that affected her verdict? Both can be true. Becky Hill and the jurors both affect the vote. Ding, 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 ding. I think this is the right answer. I don't think the judge got clarity on it. And when everybody else wants to get clarity later, this is the exact question to ask that they didn't ask. And we'll talk about that more as we get into those arguments. After the verdict and immediately before sentencing, Ms. Hill pressured the jury to speak as a group to reporters from a television show. Was Is that an accurate statement of what she said? Yes, ma'am. And did uh, jurors, some jurors decline to do that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, Question. 
Juror Z, uh, I asked you previously, was your verdict on March the 2nd, 2023 influenced in any way by communications from Becky Hill, the clerk of court? Uh, you answered that question, yes. In light of what you said in the affidavit, uh, which is I had questions about Mr. Uh, Murdoch's guilt, but voted guilty because I felt pressured by the other jurors. Is that answer uh, that I just read a more accurate statement of how you felt? Yes. Yes, ma'am. Right. So you do stand by the affidavit? Yes, ma'am. Very good. Thank you. All right. So that is the leading question that Herpulian had a problem with. Conflating the two. Is that a more accurate statement? Saying yes, but not are both statements true? And I think one follow-up question, are both statements true? Becky Hill affected your verdict and the other jurors pressured you for guilty. Maybe she would have said no. Maybe she would have said no. Now that I think about it, now that you read me the affidavit, you're right. It was just the jurors pressuring me. My opinion is that clarity and truth is always the best in the interest of justice. We weren't pressed on time. We had three days to do this, not one day. We should have gotten that clarity. I'm one person's opinion. This judge, in my opinion, basically cross-examined this witness using the affidavit, rehabilitating her answer, trying to bring her around to the answer that created ambiguity and wasn't enough to eventually carry the day to show actual prejudice. That's what it felt like. And again, stick around because this is all going to come full circle in a little bit. People are saying they're seeing shadows behind me. That's just my chair. And it's just because it's all blurred behind me. Like you can see my hands are blurred because again, the home studio is not done yet. Azam said, I thought AM would get a new trial based on Jersey's testimony. Also, I'm sorry. In my opinion, this hearing is just a formality, but the judge already made up her mind to not grant a new trial. And we'll see what Azam means by that later when we see how this decision was made. Joe, I can understand what Toll did. She used case law that trial courts use in South Carolina state level, not a federal trial. The question of whether the case law used for this hearing should be aligned with state or federal is up to the appellate or Supreme Courts. So Joe, you're tracking exactly towards where I'm going at the end of this video with a little twist. But this is tracking. This is starting to track where we're going. Netwoman, thank you for gifting 20 Lawyer You Know memberships. You may go to the jury room. Uh, and let me just explain to you what the procedure will be. I'm calling the rest of the jurors, of course, one by one. When I'm finished with that, I will bring you out as a group one more time, and then you're free to leave. You don't have to stay. Okay? Very good. Uh, you may go to the jury room. Was that? Before you, this juror is excused, but after you step out, I'd like to draw All right. Uh, you may be excused. Andrew Henson said Gosney went through Remmer and Green and decided that this judge was wrong. And I didn't watch that video, but my guess is I agree with him. Um, I, I think I agree with him as well. Um, Power of the Peace said, just found your channel and you're pretty dope, mister. Thank you. Paw printed heart. I know it's hard, but if BH swayed the jury, Alex should get a new trial. Even if most agree he is guilty. I agree with that. Janet said, I'm an oddball. I appreciate Dick and Jim. If I needed a criminal defense lawyer, I would pray to have one of their caliber or at least one that really does everything to fight for you, period. Everything ethically and morally possible to fight for you. Melanie said, I'm so upset. Maggie nor Paul was mentioned this whole process. RIP to both of their souls. It feels more about right and wrong drama. Listen, it really feels like we, we do them justice by upholding the justice system and convicting the person that did this to them the right way. That may sound like hyperbole or pie in the sky, but it's honestly what I believe to be the truth and what I literally fight for and dedicate a large portion of my life trying to, to make happen. That's good. What I'm going to try to do is redact as I, the, uh, as I did in the, um, as you did in the document that uh, you sent. I agree. Uh, so the, identifying thing, the point. Redacted now. 
That's the whole reason why. Oh, 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 good. That's great. That would be one. I'll show it to Mr. Harper. Very good. Thank you. That's the one I will give to the uh, court reporter, but I think you can see that I asked off of it. This is a court's exhibit. Court's exhibit three. Right, just to be clear, that does still have the juror. Not in here today was fact, this juror gave two statements under oath, one in an affidavit and one here to you today. The one here today was Becky Hill influenced her verdict. Yes. But when she gave an affidavit six months ago was with based on jurors. It could be both. Your Honor did, did picked out the one in the affidavit from six months ago and said, is that a more accurate statement? That priest supposes and suggests to her what she should say. And uh, we believe that this, this juror's testimony, um, and, and Your Honor, I'm afraid what you're going to say is, well, she said the affidavit was more accurate than what she testified under oath here today, and therefore I'm not going to consider her testimony. And I think that's where we're heading here. I'd ask you to bring her back in, explain to her there's nothing wrong with it both being true. Uh, I decline to do that and overrule the objection. Again, I think people are not going to be happy about it, but I, I think he's right. And I also think that it may have made it better for the judge. Maybe her answer would have been, no, both are not true. I just felt pressure from the jurors. And then it makes it feel like she didn't hit that second prong of actual prejudice. But I feel like we're just left wanting more. We really want the truth. We want to know what was in her head, what influenced her. Jonathan said, if we get a new trial, do we get, or can we get new prosecutors? Also, this hearing was a crazy surprise. I had no idea it was going to be a full day event with witnesses. It could have been up to three days, Jonathan, three days, Jonathan, and no way we get new prosecutors at this time, unless they did something horribly wrong behind the scenes. We don't know about because it would be a real waste of resources to try to bring new people up to speed. Um, Joe, who would you like to see? Daryl Brooks, grounds, subject matter jurisdiction, tic-tac argument, or Elaine Bredehoff, what, if any, in front of Toll? I, I would love to see Elaine Bredehoff because I think I don't think Toll would have a long leash for uh, Daryl Brooks. I think it would be pretty quick that he'd be in another room, maybe bound and gagged. Um, I think she would have a field day with Elaine's objections and attempts to get around objections. Um, SJ, it really comes down to do we believe in our constitutional rights Everyone should be able to receive a fair trial. It's scary that this is happening. I agree. And this is what we preach here. This is what we pound the table for. Um, and this is what we'll continue to say. It's what we will continue to say. Um, Lane, it's very problematic, but why didn't jurors bring this to the judge's attention during trial? They asked them every day not to discuss the case, et cetera. I do see how this is a little different because Becky Hill is in court every day in front of the judge they probably assume they're all aligned here, all on the same team. It doesn't seem like me calling them and saying, watch his body language. He's guilty. He did this. Don't be fooled by the defense. It's very different when it happens from someone inside the courtroom that's seen as a neutral party, which in my opinion is why I believe, again, that just the fact that she tampered with these jurors and was making it known that it, she thought he was guilty midway through the case at the very latest, that's enough. Whether or not, and that's the one. So presumptive prejudice, being presumptively prejudicial is so unusual in the law. It is reserved for very specific circumstances. But this is so bad and it's so hard to separate what really was the last straw that made it click in your head to get beyond a reasonable doubt. How did you view the evidence that was being presented to you? If throughout the trial or midway through the trial, somebody you trusted to understand how this works, understand this process and the inner workings of a trial starts to tell you, don't be fooled. He, he's acting, it's fake tears, whatever it may be. Most of the time, criminal defendants don't testify. How can you separate what actually swayed you? And that's why I think the presumptively prejudicial standard is more appropriate. I'm not the judge. This judge toll will forget more than I'll ever learn about the law. So I respect it. It is what it is. And he's still sitting in prison and he's still convicted and he ain't getting a new trial yet. Net woman question. Did the judge choose to make all the questions closed questions? I.e., yes, no. Can you promo the discord for your members only? Also, can you or John make a subscription for crumbly and read? Okay. That is all for now. Oh, a subsection for crumbly and read. Sorry. Um, John, will you check that out on the discord? And yes, we can do another promo for the discord on the members only the judge formulated her questions. Our doesn't like them, but they're the judge's questions. All right. Uh, Mr. Bailiff. Yes, sir. Um, 
uh, very, very unhappy about it. All right, here we go. So here was a, a bombshell dropped midday after Jersey, who was basically the most important juror, the only one that really could have created a situation for a new trial. After she testifies, listen to what happened. Report this to you, and I'm uh, very, very unhappy about it, but uh, there's nothing to do but put it on the record, and then I will proceed with questioning the rest of the jurors. The jurors' cell phones were not uh, confiscated or taken from them. And they tune this thing in on court TV and listen to all of what just went on. So uh, you may make whatever uh, uh, statement you'd like to make, and then I'm going to go on and question the jurors. I will tell you in advance, I am not going to uh, uh, stop the proceedings or uh, do anything to interrupt. I'm going to get the rest of this on the, the record. You might imagine that they no longer have their cell phones with them. Uh, Your Honor, we have a five-minute recess to discuss what we need to put on the record. So she gives them a five-minute recess. She's mad about it, but did you hear that? These jurors that are out there, not supposed to be talking to anybody. Well, a few of them pulled up their phone and watched on Facebook and court TV. That's not a good look for these jurors. Why are they doing that? Why are they doing that sitting back there waiting to be questioned? I think that's weird. I, I just think it's weird. Somebody saying they missed it. Jurors were back in the jury room or somewhere waiting to be questioned, and they're watching on the phone juror, num juror letter Z's questioning, and probably Harpootlian's arguments and the prior affidavits and how the judge was going to read and ask her questions. That's not good. That's not how it's supposed to be done. It's very frustrating. This is very frustrating for me to watch and, and feel like we're going to say, that's just another thing we're going to ignore. It's fine. This is fair. This is fair. It's fine. We're going to let in all these financial crimes. Pile on. He's a horrible guy. We're going to let the clerk of the court say things she shouldn't say in front of the jurors. Have inappropriate contact with them. Tell them to watch him closely. Tell them the defendants don't usually testify, but that he's testifying, so get ready. We're going to have a juror say that it affected her verdict. But we're just going to figure out, we're going to have a, a blood spatter expert testimony that it's all over this shirt presented to the grand jury, and then that's actually not true. All of this push, pushed aside. And I think they have enough evidence to convict him without all of that. But they didn't do it without all of that. That is the point. This doesn't mean he's not guilty. This doesn't mean he didn't do it. But so many things have been ignored. So much smoke has been ignored and they're just telling us there's no fire. No fire. I mean, I'm not going to take all day on this thing. I report things as they come to me. Uh, I will give you a couple minutes, and then we're going to be... They were late getting here. I didn't get to start on time like I wanted to, so I need to just calm down a little bit. But I tell you, don't take any long period of time. Court will be in recess for five minutes. Let me place upon the record two things. First of all, uh, uh, I, I have uh, made certain now that, that a bailiff will be in the jury room with these jurors. Uh, why that... I uh, announced that many times, uh, but that is the way it was to run. Why there wasn't a juror in the jury room is something I don't know, but uh, I have asked that that be followed rigidly. I've also asked, I don't go into jury rooms, never have and never will, but I've asked the uh, bailiff to tell the jurors that they are not to discuss any testimony uh, that any of them will give you. I asked juror Z whether she was comfortable because I would be glad to place her in a separate room so that she's not uh, set upon by the rest of the jurors. She gave me a big smile and said she was perfectly comfortable. And I said, at any time you're not comfortable, you simply tell me and I will have you uh, placed in either my office or another jury room. So that's why I left it with juror Z. I think she's fine, but I just want to make sure of that. Uh, and again, uh, on the record, uh, the conversation I had with her was outside the jury room. I, I don't go into the jury room for any reason. Very good. Mr. Bailey? Yes, sir. I don't go into the jury room for any reason. Yeah, because we don't even want the appearance of impropriety of court personnel doing that, right, Judge? I mean, it's just so bad. No judge. I, I, I'll just tell you, I'm not, I don't know everything. I haven't been everywhere. Every single judge and lawyer that I have ever had a relationship with, that we've talked shop, that I've tried cases against, with, in front of, learned from, have learned from me, would all be absolutely appalled and floored if the clerk during a trial did what Becky Hill did. I cannot overstate that. I think this judge is ticked. I think Judge Newman is ticked. I think everybody's ticked. 
and this Becky. But it seems like we're all trying to do just enough to make it not prejudicial because we don't want this verdict overturned. That's what it feels like. All right, let me take a second and summarize some of this because we're 45 minutes in and all we've listened to is jurors E. Um, all right, so we start going through the other jurors. We don't need to play it. They all basically answer yes to those questions. That was their verdict. It's correct. A lot of them didn't hear anything from Becky Hill, so obviously she didn't affect their verdict. Um, he did ask one juror if they were ever in a car with Becky Hill, and the juror said no. <coughs> um, nothing from Becky again. Didn't talk to Becky. Oh, they added questions about, were you watching these proceedings on a cell phone? A couple of them said yes. Most of them said no. They weren't watching it. It seems like it was only one or two jurors that actually had it up on their cell phone. Uh, one juror said Becky Hill did say watch his body language, but it didn't influence his verdict. Um, let's see. Trying to see if there's any other. There's more later about what the juror from Friday said. So then after they go through all the jurors, the court thanks the jurors, dismisses them. Um, Poot asks again to question Juror Z because he thinks the judge is confused. Juror Z, through her lawyer, says she wants to clarify her statements. The judge says no. They end up proffering with an affidavit that they make part of the record that, uh, that the judge kept saying, a higher court can look at it. If they disagree with me, fine. That's above my pay grade, basically. And I thought this was the single worst decision in the entire hearing. I liked how the judge handled 99% of this hearing. She was tough to both sides. She was tough to all lawyers. She was the same to every witness, whether it was Becky Hill or a juror. She was consistent. And I appreciated all of that. I thought she was funny. I thought she was tough as nails. Um, spit and vinegar type decisive, which is, you know, my favorite quality in a judge, but this was the single worst decision. And people asked me on Twitter and came at me hard when I said this, that they should have let Jersey come and clarify, say whatever she wanted to say, frankly, whatever the defense wanted to tell the judge, let her clarify, ask her, are both true at the same time, whatever it may have been. And the judge said, no. So people came at me on Twitter and was like, can you think of a single other situation ever? where they would allow a juror to recall after both lawyers got to ask them everything they wanted to ask them. I was like, first off, both lawyers did not get to ask them everything they wanted to ask them. Second, it's not a trial, but let's go ahead and run with that. Number one, the answer is yes. Many times, I even think we've watched trials together on YouTube. I can't think of any specific examples where, and maybe it was Melly, where law enforcement officers were absolutely recalled after both sides had an opportunity to ask them everything because the state's like, oh, judge, actually, there was one other thing I wanted to ask that officer. And guess what? They were allowed to. One of the first trials as a very baby lawyer at the prosecutor's office that I watched, I wasn't even handling, I sat up there at counsel's table, but another prosecutor in a misdemeanor little case forgot to prove jurisdiction and venue. You have to prove jurisdiction and venue. Where did the case happen in Pinellas County, Florida? If you don't prove that, you lose. Guess what? The prosecutor rested her case without proving venue. We were done. The defense made a motion for JOA. The judge was like, the prosecutor's like, judge, can we reopen our case and recall the officer to ask him one question real quick? And guess what? The judge said yes. Reopened the case, prosecutor asked the question, we got venue and the case continued. So absolutely, absolutely can this happen. Judy said, I'm disappointed with Peter in the chat. I don't understand why people are disappointed if I disagree with something or if we disagree. I I'm never going to not state how I see something. I don't understand why people are di disappointed with somebody's viewpoint on something that happens legally. 
literally every decision made by the courts has two sides that people are arguing. Peter knew the outcome and incited the chat. The only thing I incite in the chat is discussion. And people are saying Jersey is compromised. That's fine if you believe that. The judge felt Jersey was not credible. And I disagree, but that's fine. Um, okay. So let's jump ahead now to Miss Becky. Miss Becky and her testimony. Uh, you know, criminal trial process. This is a inquiry that is very much directed um, by the trial court and what the trial court uh, thinks is a Certainly the conduct of this hearing is within your discretion. What is not <clears throat> is who has the burden of proof. We do. And we can't meet that burden if we can't call witnesses. And so I'd ask the court to allow us to call witnesses. Um, and if at the conclusion of us presenting those, um, you believe the state uh, has is required to present evidence um, to counter that evidence or in some way, I'm not quite. And by the way, I don't want anybody going at anybody for being disappointed or anything like that. I just want to say, let's talk about both sides. Let's talk about both sides. We're not inciting anything in the chat. Let's do it respectfully, okay, and gracefully, because guess what? We could be wrong. All of us could be wrong. Since remember is not the standard, I'm not quite sure um, what they have to prove, but, but that, that's a, an argument down the line. I believe we ought to be able to call witnesses now, um, and we have witnesses which would substantiate the burden we have to show you that statements were made by the clerk of court and that those uh, statements um, had impact on a juror or jurors. Right. I, uh, I got a couple of reactions to that. Number one, fine. Uh, the pretrial was the time to figure out exactly what we were going to do here. Uh, and uh, I think this is where the and she projects for our case. This affidavit, we proffer it for our case. Uh, we have 20. At the end of 2020? Yes. And uh, prior to that, did you have any involvement or experience with the uh, state judicial system? I did. And could you tell the court what that was, please? I was a South Carolina official court reporter for about 14 years. Right. And were you, uh, in being an official court reporter, you would serve in the courtroom, which is Ms. Harris is here today, is that correct? Or That's what correct. Your, uh, and was that primarily in the 14th Circuit? It was primarily in the 14th Circuit. However, I did travel throughout the state. Um, did you have any other uh, experience in, your, in professional experience prior to becoming a court reporter or a uh, court reporter? I was a court reporter uh, freelance for two years before that. Okay. And then any other professional uh, pursuits you've had over the course of your career? Uh, I was able to be a middle school teacher, and I worked for the Board of Disabilities for a few years as well. Um, let me go ahead and, and just kind of get straight to it. Um, in your uh, capacity as clerk of court and in your previous experience being a court reporter, uh, were you familiar with the, the rules that apply to court staff as it, as it comes to interactions with jurors in the course of a criminal trial or civil trial for that matter? Yes. All right. And uh, could you tell the court uh, generally what those rules are as far as, as what contact is permissible and what contact is not permissible? Just very quickly. The judge gives the, the law and gives the instructions for a jury and uh, the attorneys will state their opening argument, their opening statements, their closing arguments. And basically uh, the clerk of court and anyone else, uh, court reporter, we're, we're there to... Uh, my understanding would be to make sure that everyone's taken care of. Do you need some Kleenex? Do you need some water? Different things like that. Just to make sure that they're taken care of. Real quick on that note. Thank you, Netwoman, for just continuing to shower uh, gifted memberships. But Jenna said, as a true Canadian, I want to apologize to you all for the live the other day. I wasn't myself, came off as wrong, lost sleep over it, sending love, best chat. Don't. Don't lose sleep over it, Jenna. I get it. Sometimes people get a little riled up with stuff. Sometimes they have a bad day, like you said. Don't worry about it. It's fine. It's completely in the past, completely forgiven. We love that you're here. We love when you share your opinion. And we're all getting better every day. That should be our goal. Yes, Amy, like and subscribe. And I think Sue was talking about Miss Becky here. So I'll leave this up here as we listen. Is it, is it common for clerks of court uh, to have interaction with jurors from the course of a trial to see to those various logistical needs that you, that you just described? Yes. And did that happen in the Murdoch case? It did. Uh, and can you give us an example of some of the logistical things that you or other things that you would see to to uh, to deal with any needs that the jurors may have? I mean, did you provide them food, coffee, uh, make sure they were comfortable, things like that? Yes, all of that. Right. Provide blankets for them if they were cold? Our courtroom was very cold in Colleton County, yes. Um, did you uh, provide them with ask for a Tylenol if they needed, make sure coffee and snacks were available? Yes. Uh, did you take lunch orders for them so that they were fed each day? Yes. Um, at any time, did you 
interact with any juror in an attempt to influence their view of the facts in the State v. Murdoch case? No. All right. I want to ask you some specifics about that. Um, at Straight up, no. Some allegations that have been raised. Um, at any time, did you tell the jury not to be fooled by evidence presented by Mr. Murdoch's attorneys? I did not. At any time, did you instruct the jury to watch him closely and look at his actions? I did not. At any time, did you instruct the jury or tell the jury to look at his movements? No. At any time, as the jury moved to deliberate, did you uh, tell the jury uh, this shouldn't take long? No. At any time, did you tell the jury uh, that the defense case, watch out for the defense case, they're going to try to throw you off, or anything along those lines that was meant to influence the jurors against Mr. Murdoch? No. Let me ask you um, if you ever made any comment to the jurors uh, about um, the fact that the defendant was going to testify. Did you, have a con did you have a conversation in the presence of the jurors prior to the defendant testifying about the fact that he was about to testify? It wasn't directly related to the jurors. I was talking to Mr. Bill, who was our bailiff foreman, mm -hmm. uh, our bailiff um, over the jury, and I was talking to him about that. All right. And what did you say? I told him what I had just come from downstairs telling my uh, security and bailiff office that Judge Newman had. Just after she says she knows what the rules are, she says this in earshot of the jury because jurors heard this. And Fran asks, will or can Becky be charged with perjury for lying to the judge today? She can, probably won't. And again, we've been over this with perjury. It's so difficult to prove, but we will see what the judge thinks with the judge's questions, number one, her comments and her ruling, what she thinks about Miss Becky and her testimony. So stick around. Had allowed more testimony in regarding the uh, financials. And then also the defendant had decided that he may testify. And where were the jurors at the point that that conversation occurred? There were a few jurors uh, standing in line, and there were some in the bathroom, I'm sure, because they said they were waiting on jurors to get out of the bathroom. And there were some in the jury room just milling around from what I could see looking down the hallway. And uh, and again, what were what were, the, what were the words that you said during that conversation? What were the effect of them? To Mr. Beal. Yeah. And what did you say? I told him that the, the Judge Newman had was allowing more of the financial evidence in, which would prolong the, the testimony. Imagine if that is said in front of a juror. Judge Newman is allowing more of the financial evidence in. If they know anything about the case, which maybe they don't because they're maybe doing this for the first time or they're jurors, they don't have experience and they're not like you guys who watch these cases and understand this. But if I said to you, the judge is deciding to let in more of the financial evidence against Mr. Murdoch, so it's going to be a while. It's like, A, the defense is trying to keep it out. The judge disagreed with the defense. They're going to hear more financial stuff. Hmm, what is this financial stuff? Um, the worst evidence ever against a guy because he is just locked and loaded, guilty as sin, so obviously guilty that he admits it on the stand. They're going to let more of that in. Why is this stuff being said in earshot of the jury? Pull the bailiff into your office. Do it in the courtroom when the jury is not in there. It's just inappropriate. This is not how it goes in trials. It's not how it goes. I mean, the trial a little bit. And also that the defendant had decided that he was going to testify. Did you say anything about this being an important day? Pay attention. We'll get coffee for you. Things like that. I, I usually give a little pep talk to the jurors. Um, it's, it's sometimes hard sitting a long time. But my usual, and I do remember saying, pay attention. It's a big day today. Whatever you need, let Mr. Bill know or one of the other bailiffs, and they'll be glad to get it for you. Did your comments or were your comments in any way phrased in favor of one side or against another side? Or were they more of a neutral comment about paying attention? No. It was not for one side or the other. And just wait. She answers like this, and then we're going to get these future answers out of her. It's just wild. And yes, Netwoman wants green only. Green only. Everybody's green. Thank you, Netwoman. Keep the vibes high, Netwoman. Were you um, present when the jury went to the Moselle property uh, to, to conduct the jury view? I was. Okay. And was Judge Newman there as well? He was. Um, during uh, the time that you were on the property, traveling there, traveling back, did you have any conversation with the jurors where you made any comment about the substance of any testimony or any comment about the merits or the strength of the case? No, no. Uh, did you have a uh, quick comment uh, to the forelady about how the property was beautiful and, and there were tree, tea olive trees there that, that bloom and smell good or words to that effect? I did. And was there any other conversation uh, related that you had that you where you made any comment about the, the case or the merits or anything like that? Oh, no, no.
during the course of this trial, uh, did you have a bailiff employee whose primary job it was to see to the jury and, and, and their security and keep them separate from uh, from everyone else that was involved in this trial? I did. And who was that? Mr. Bill Polk. All right. And he was ultimately the jury coordinator in this particular case? That's correct. Um, during the course of the, uh, the, the deliberations, once the jury went back there, uh, did you have any contact with the juries or uh, have any substantive discussion with them? Not at all. Did you uh, have any discussion with them about logistics, about staying in a hotel or anything like that? I did not. Um, did you have any interaction with the jurors or any anything to do with them having smoke breaks or anything like that? I did not. <clears throat> During the uh, course of the trial, did you have any discussion or interaction with the jurors about them giving any interviews to the media or, or making themselves available to the media? I'm asking during the course of the trial. No, so. not during the course of the trial. After the verdict had been reached and the case was in sentencing, did you have any conversation with any jurors at that time after they had already uh, entered their verdicts and been individually polled? Yes, after the sentencing. All right, and tell the court. Just, just real quick, we're going to hear the judge at the end of this hearing. Actually, we're not going to hear it because I skipped it. But the judge, every time a juror was dismissed, she's like, nobody can make you talk. Nobody. Anybody makes you talk, you come see me. She didn't even tell them, you can talk to people if you want, but nobody can make you talk. That's what the judge is saying after these proceedings. That's normal. Sometimes that's annoying to us lawyers because we're like, we kind of want to talk to them, judge. So if they wanted to talk to us, don't make it sound like they, they can't or they shouldn't talk to us if they want to. But Miss Becky, on the opposite side of the spectrum, is like setting up media interviews. That's not normal. We see this stuff. It's not just me who sees it at everyday working. You guys who watch these trials, you see how the court talks to jurors. They're not handing them business cards and flying up with them to do interviews. It's not how it goes. What that interaction was at that time. There were several outlets, news outlets that wanted to um, interview the jury as a whole and really wanted to get them up to North to New York. Um, and so I was trying to get a hold of all the jurors to, Talk about that. That was something we had not prepared for. Did you at all pressure the jurors to speak, or did you just tell them that it was their option to speak or not, and here's the contact information? There was, I did not pressure the jury no. to speak. No. Did, did you advise them that it was their decision and their decision alone whether or not they wished to speak to the media? It was totally their decision. And did you advise them of that? Yes, yes. I'm going to ask, ask it again, but I just want to be sure. At any time, did you make any comment to any juror or in the presence of any juror in which you it all tried to influence them in favor of one side or against another. I did not. Did you understand being a longtime court employee in court of court that that is outside? I try not to roll my eyes, but like, come on. Thank you, Francis, by the way. And Jack, this, this, if we live in a simulation, somebody made a joke that LA is a simulation. If, when I was there, um, if we lived in a simulation, to test what we believe as a nation about constitutional rights, about rights of criminal defendants, about presumption of innocence. If we believed it, this is the perfect case for that simulation. Let's think of the worst guy we can think of. How do we make him the worst guy ever? Well, we make him commit the worst crimes against the people closest to him that he's supposed to love and protect. Okay, check that box. Number two. We have him do all this other crazy stuff like the side of the road incident and the, the BUI case and all this stuff, right? Okay. Let's make him at least allegedly generationally corrupt. His family for over a hundred years of power and abuse of power said, okay, good. Okay. What else can we do? Well, let's make him steal from his clients who passed away or were maimed or injured or rendered um, incapacitated because of somebody else's negligence or actions, and he steals their money. That's good. That's good. But you know what? Let's not make that just an allegation. Let's make him get convicted or plead guilty to that and serve prison time for that. Let's tack that on too. Okay? So this is the guy. Do we believe in justice and due process and constitutional rights? This is the guy that makes that answer tough. Because if your answer is no to Alec Murdoch, he doesn't deserve all that then you don't believe we deserve that. That's a fact. That's a hard fact to come to grips with, but that's how it works. Each individual crime is different. 
This is a great question, Jack. Thank you, Donna. Shiraz said, believe four jurors, two non-deliberating jurors, Clerk Rhonda and Judge Newman or Becky Hill. Agree AM was guilty, but process warrants new trial. And that's that's really the point. When you're when you're listening to Becky Hill, that's the point. The boundaries of what is appropriate interactions with the jurors during the course of the trial. Absolutely. And did at any time did you violate that rule that you understood? I did not. Of course, you don't. This time, Your Honor. Yeah. Mr. Harputin, on cross-examination. <clears throat> Ms. Hill, we spent six weeks together, didn't we? We did. And during those six weeks, uh, you were helpful to me if you could do, correct? I was. I accommodated just about every request I made. Yes, sir. Where were we? Oh, yeah. Yeah, that would be good. All right. I don't know who's supposed to hear this other than you, but um, I assume they can hear us. Her reporter, I'm sorry. She's more important, not as important as you. Yes, yeah, I agree. Um, oh, yeah, we're all friends, right? We spent six weeks together in a very pressure-filled situation, correct? It was a long six weeks. It was a long six weeks. And um, during those six weeks, <clears throat> you were helpful to me in a number of different ways. Um, Accommodating friends that I had the one to come watch the trial, for instance, correct? That's correct. You even allowed me to use the private restroom down on the first floor so I didn't have to stand in line with the rest of the people um, trying to get breaks, correct? Correct. So we have no animosity towards each other. You didn't do something to me, and I didn't do something to you during that trial, right? Absolutely. Okay. Now, given that, I'm going to ask you some questions today <clears throat> that may indicate to you that I have um, some antagonism towards you. Let me disabuse you of that. I'm here doing a job representing my client, and you've been around the court system for decades, correct? Yes, sir. So you understand what we're doing here today? Yes. Now, let me understand a couple of things. I think and I've read your book, one, some editions of your book. There's several. We got a bunch of um, emails in which you have drafts that you forwarded to your co-author, correct? Right. Objection. I believe, uh, object to relevance. I believe uh, any drafts you sent to your co-author with the book is beyond the scope of this inquiry. So Creighton Waters is going to object multiple times to things that it didn't seem like Judge Toll was going to let Harpootlian go into, but she gives him wide latitude in cross-examining Ms. Becky to hammer her credibility. And that he does. Here today. Overruled. You may proceed. Thank you, Your Honor. And in those this drafts. This is a good um, question, but it wouldn't be relevant to this. And unfortunately, it would open a can of worms that could become a total sideshow that this judge was not going to allow. But I get I get why you're asking. You say certain things um, about the trial, about um, the process, which you later did not include in the, the final version. It's called editing. Is that correct? I would agree with that. Okay. Now, let's talk about this book for just a second. It, um, when did you first decide you were going to write a book? I think a thought was there. A hundred percent, Anne. A hundred percent. This is the point. This is the point. Because everybody doesn't get a good lawyer either. I mean, you got to remember that as well. Bonnie, does you, do you have to be a member to get your question answered? No. There's a ton of questions coming in. I'm answering as many as I can. Some from members, some not. Some super chats, some not. I try to hit every super chat. I don't always get to all of them. I do my absolute best, but I try to I try to pull what's relevant for the portion of the video we're watching. So if you ask the question earlier, it may come up later if it fits better with that part. I do my best to try to keep the video flowing. Uh, chirpy lady, you don't want to know. He would he would have been a hundred times worse than Harpoolian. I'll just tell you that. You think Harpoolian's bad? These older, experienced, higher up criminal defense lawyers that have a lot of leeway and a lot of power and um, a lot of leash with courts. I mean, my dad would have been, he is absolutely appalled that this stuff is happening. There's just, there's no way this stuff should happen. There, a very fleeting thought before the trial. Did you take any steps before the trial or at the initiation of the trial to begin writing this book or working with somebody on this book? Oh, no, sir. When did you and your co-author get together? It was several weeks after the trial. Okay. Did you talk to anybody about the fact you were going to write a book before the trial? There were several uh, anchors and several journalists that I did speak with about the possibility of writing a book. Um, did, she makes that seem normal. 
it's not. I'm so disorganized. I apologize. Um, Thank you. Azar. Did, do you know, did you seek assistance in this trial from other clerks of court? Yes, sir, I did. And who were they? Rhonda McElveen, who is the Barnwell County Clerk of Court, and Renee Elvis from the Horry County Clerk of Court. And um, did they, were they there with you the entire six weeks? No. I mean, how, much, how long were they there? How, how often were they there? Rhonda McElveen was there as often as she could be, probably several times a week. Renee Elvis helped me during the jury selection. I agree, who cares? And Lane, I don't know if I would say. And um, did she begin, oh. that is, uh, Ms. McElveen, did she begin working? Uh, Lane, I don't know if say if I would say anybody gets in trouble, but it's definitely not what should happen, especially in a case like this where we've worked so hard to make sure stuff is not happening. Um, and to, to drop the ball there is just, it's brutal. It's brutal. So Laura said she makes me anxious because she acted so rushed. Did she have a plane to catch? I think you're talking about the judge. Somebody else said... Yeah, psychology noir. The judge seems scattered from the start with the cell phone debacle. I think she got overwhelmed, just my observation. It definitely seemed like she wanted to smash this into one day when it easily could have taken three. I think she was more angry and flustered than she was like disorganized and flustered, if that makes sense, because of the cell phone stuff. But I mean, it, it was really, really wild. Somebody else said this was so this felt like the day was so disorganized. Um and yeah, I mean, it did feel like it was going fast and we did a lot of things in one day. We packed a lot into one day. Working with you prior to jury selection. Can you repeat that question? She, we began jury selection, I think, on January 23rd, correct? Correct. Was she working with you or consulting with you prior to the 23rd? No, sir. Did you have any conversation with her about the trial? Not until she got to the trial on what, I can't remember the exact day she came. Okay. Now, was she a friend of yours? She was a friend, yes. Was? Well, she is a friend. Okay. Yes. But she's done nothing to make you any less a friend. Yes, sir. Now, um, did you tell her about the time of the trial that you were going to write a book? That you had thought about and were going to write a book? I can't remember exactly. I, I think we did have a conversation about a book possibly in the future. And did you tell her you're going to write a book because you thought it would make a lot of money? Oh, no, sir. You never said that? No, sir. And did you tell her that you were going to write a book to make a bunch of money so you could buy a lake lot and build a house on it? No, sir. Okay. Now, did you ever tell her uh, that you had given a juror? Is this somebody that she just gave a lot of credibility to that she asked to come in and help her with this trial? And she's going to contradict her. We're going to hear from Rhonda. And Becky just sits there and says no with a straight face. Very calm. I don't think Becky got very flustered here. She was very calm and giving her answers, but some tough answers to hear. That woman's just going to continue. Make sure your gifting is turned on because you never know when a gifted membership is coming. Or a ride home that you accompanied Mr. Bill, what's his last name? Bill Polk. Right. Did, did you and he took a juror home one night? Did you tell her that? Did you take a juror home one night? I didn't take a juror home one night. Did no, Mr. Sir. Polk, Mr. Polk and you take a juror home one night? Yes, no, sir. We did. So you never gave a juror a ride in a car. So why did it take her so long to answer that she didn't tell Rhonda that? He's like, did you tell her you took a juror home? Long pause. And he's like, well, did you take a juror home? No, 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 we didn't. It's like, and why would you tell Rhonda you took a juror home if you didn't? And Rhonda says that she did. It's very weird. Rhonda says that Becky said she did. Very weird. With Mr. Poker without? No, sir. Okay. Um, now, also, during the trial, um, your your daughter ended up on the venire. Is that right? She did. And um, she was coming up. And did you talk to me and, and Mr. Waters about putting her on the jury if at all possible? I'm not sure that we wanted her to be on the jury if at all possible, but um, I think the question was, um, would she make a good juror? And I said, she sure she sure would. Now, I don't think we asked you. I think you told us she would make a great jury. Did you not? I remember you asking. Okay. okay. I was considering putting your daughter on the jury. Yes, sir. And who does she work for? She works for Compass South. Does she work for the Sheriff's Department at some point? No, sir. Okay. Does she work in law enforcement at all? No, sir. Okay. Um, now, I, think I would consider putting your daughter on the jury. Let me ask you this. Um, how many jury rooms were there? We have two jury rooms in Colleton. In this trial, how many jury rooms did you have? How two. Many? Okay, so the, the entire jury wasn't together at any one time. They were separated in the two rooms? Yes. Okay. And um, did uh, the when they're separated into uh, two 
uh, jury rooms like that, are they next door to each other? Are they down the hall from each other? What? They are next door to each other. Okay. So, but if you close the door to one, can they hear what's going on in the other one? Some women probably have very good hearing and men too, but I would say probably not. Okay. Are there restrooms in both of the jury rooms? There are. Okay. Where, I mean, are there two restrooms or just one? There's one restroom in each jury room. Okay. Were either one of those uh, restrooms designated men and women or did everybody use the same one? They were unisex. They were unisex. Okay. Now, <clears throat> um, Prior to your testimony here today, have you met with uh, the Attorney General's Office in Sweat? I have. On how many occasions? I want to say twice. Okay. And remember when the first time was? I think the first time was in September. Okay. And the second time was last week? Yes, sir. And that was in Walterboro? Yes, right. And you all spent about four, four and a half hours together? I'm going to say maybe two hours together. Okay. And in those two hours, you went over your testimony here today? They asked me questions. Did they ever correct your answers or suggest you answer differently? Oh, no. No, no. Oh, so no. You, just, you just went through what you went through in 20 minutes here. It took two hours to go through what you were with that. <laughs> there were times when I would step out of the room and come back in. Um, but I would say we were there for about two hours. Now, um, you have described in your book your role in Switzerland. Is that correct? Correct. Okay. And that is that you should not be in any way um, opinionated about what's going on in the trial. Is that correct? That's true. Okay. Um, yet in your book, you indicated a number of different points during the trial. You had concluded he was guilty. Is that correct? I think. Your Honor, I don't know if her conclusions in the book are in any way relevant to what occurred during the trial and whether or not there was any communications with the jurors, which is the sole issue that we're here for today, is whether or not uh, Ms. Hill had any extraneous influence on the jurors. Um, and so I think this is uh, going a little far afield to object to the relevant jurors. Let me give you an example. You indicate riding back from Moselle that you and three other people were in a car and you all decided adamantly, I think was the word you used, um, that he was guilty, that he had killed his wife and son. Is that what you put in the book? I can't remember if I put that in the book, but if you say I did, then I will did agree that with happen? you. We did have a conversation about what each of us thought. And we all four agreed that he was guilty, correct? And none of us were jurors. No, no trust me, I know that. Um, but you had an abiding conviction, um, at least by the time of the Moselle visit, that he was guilty. And the other people in the car with you were bailiffs, were they not? No. Who um, were they? Some were not bailiffs. One was a court reporter. One was our... Um, security officer, head security, and another was a deputy sheriff. Okay. But the four of y'all rode out there, and based on what, I, I mean, I can, you want me to read you how chilled you were and how you felt this, that poor Paul and, and, and Maggie been executed by him on that scene, that visiting the scene convinced you that he was a horrible, horrible murder? You want me to read that to you? Or you will concede that's what you wrote? I will concede that's what I wrote, but if I may, I will, I would say that, that a lot of that is poetic license um, in writing a book and in well, making it sound. So she really uses her poetic license. And I want to highlight that she almost uses poetic license as a license to lie, which is not how it works. And this is just the beginning. She's going to say it multiple times. I don't like that. Okay. So some of it's poetic license and some of it you just stole. You, you, you uh, purloined it from that BBC writer, right? Right. Well, again, I object to uh, not only the relevance, but the uh, scope of uh, cross. I object also under uh, rule um, six. Some of this is so like funny because it's like the judge already knows there's no jury here. The judge even says that at one point. Um, and the judge is going to let it in, but he hammers her with plagiarism. She admits it and just keeps going on like no big deal. So, uh, hey, I don't believe that's appropriate cross examination. Overruled. Oh, you may continue, Mr. Harper. Did you steal part of the book? I did plagiarize, okay, Mr. Harper. That's stealing, isn't it? It is. Okay. And for that, I'm very sorry. And I have apologized. Okay. And that makes it okay? What I did, I did. And I apologize for okay. that. And part of the book is you say literary license, exaggeration? I wouldn't call it exaggeration. Okay. Now, let me ask you, this is Switzerland, and this is, you're saying this is happening while you're supposed to be Switzerland. You decided the defendant's guilty, and um, if Ms. McElmean says that it's going to make you more money um, if you if you found guilty, don't you think it's reasonable to assume that you may have crossed the line from time to time? Your Honor, I object to the form of the question, assuming facts not in evidence. Can you repeat that question one more time? Sorry, really? Let me just move on to something else. Um, let, let me ask you, um, you had interactions with some jurors, and I believe um, in a conference in the judges' chambers, um, you indicated that you had seen a post on Walter Burrow word of mouth. Your Honor, again, I object. I think he's delving now into the Facebook inquiry. Uh, we believe, again, that that's relevant to the inquiry for Your Honor. I will allow a limited... I would have got her own book, Azam. Uh, he's... Uh, 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 as I understand it, trying to impeach her testimony and uh, 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 explore her credibility. And uh, I think I've already told Mr. Harpootman that I don't want a whole trial about the business of Facebook and the egg juror, but uh, I will allow limited examination on this point. You may proceed, Mr. Harpootman. Am I over, oversimplifying that? You, I mean, it's in your book. Um, you saw something on Walter Burr word of mouth, which appeared to you to be from the ex-husband of one of your jurors. Is that correct? Am I oversimplifying that? 
I remember reading one night something on Walter Burr word of mouth. And when I was in the courtroom on a Monday morning, listening to the judge and the attorneys talking about a matter, it sounded like it was relevant to each other. Okay. And um, you became aware somehow that this juror had a restraining order out for her ex-husband? She told me that herself. Okay. And um, uh, tell me how uh, it came for her to tell you about that. Where did she tell you? She uh, was very talkative. And when I was instructed by Judge Newman to go and get her from out of the jury room with a, a deputy following me, she was talking to me all the way back to the judge's chamber since she mentioned that there were restraining orders out when they had divorced. So how did the judge, who brought it to the judge's attention about this Walter Burr word of mouth thing? I let the judge know, thinking that it could be related. Okay. And you let the judge know what? That I had read something on Walter Burr word of mouth. Okay. And that you knew it was tied to that juror? I didn't know that it was. I wasn't sure at all. Who do you think it was tied to? Thank you, BNB. And before we continue with this, Maria, great point. What's weird is the juror also said no to getting a ride home. Yeah, I said that. I may have kind of like glossed over it, but it's like the juror said she didn't get a ride home. Becky said she didn't get a ride home. Rhonda said Becky said it. And then Becky paused when asked if she said it. So did she like lie and tell Rhonda she did give a juror a ride home? Was she testing to see what Rhonda would say because she wanted to give a juror a ride home in the future? It's very weird. Just another day in Murdoch, right? <laughs> You're right. You're right. From what y'all were talking about at the bench, um, I felt like I needed to let him know, just in case it was related. There was something about an ex-husband and an ex-wife and somebody being on the jury. You didn't tell the judge that you had found what we call the apology post? You didn't tell the judge that? I didn't call it that, no. Thank you don't remember you. producing it saying that, the, the, producing it to the judge saying, this is a post in which the guy that posted it on Friday night says the devil got in him and drinking and he apologized for what he posted. You didn't produce that? My staff did, one of my staff. But you gave that to the judge and gave it to us, did you not? Yes, we did. As if it were from that juror's ex-husband, correct? Correct. And you know it wasn't? I don't know that, Mr. Hartbillian, no. So, and this, you did not take that juror out and talk to her before you took her to the judge? Is that I, I never talked to that juror about stuff like that. Okay. Um, did you ever talk to the four lady of the jury, separate from the jury? I did. Okay. And tell us, uh, where did that occur? When I would go into the jury room and I would speak with the four lady, we would be in like the hallway in the, the, the two jury rooms were side by side and the opening to the jury room went out into the hallway and we would be surrounded by the jurors at all times. Uh, Mr. Bill would be very, very nearby or another bailiff as well when we would speak. And what did you speak to her about? There were several instances. One was um, there was a juror who needed some feminine products. There was another time when band-aids were needed. There were times when uh, Tylenol would be needed. Other than items that were needed by the jury's health object, did you ever discuss, did she ever discuss with you, if some issues the jurors had emotionally or some issues with dissension in the jury room? She only told me that there were some loud jurors and it made some of the other jurors a little upset. But other than that, that's... What did, what did you tell her to do? I told her if it got out of hand to write a note to the judge and that she could sign the note and get Mr. Bell to give it to the judge and the judge would handle that for her. Okay. Now, um, you did publish a book after after this trial, is that correct? We did. And you went to New York and took some of the jurors to the Today Show? The, take, the Today Show did invite us, yes. Now, one of those jurors um, that went up there with you, the day of the verdict, um, wore, for the first time I can remember, wore a... Robin, there are at least some of the higher courts that agree with you. And I would be one as well. It's really hard to prove that, which is what the point of the presumption of prejudice is. Jeremy, that would have been interesting. That would have definitely been interesting. Suit to, to court. Do you remember that? Your Honor, again, I would object to discussion of the jurors wearing a suit or a post-trial trip to, uh, to the Today Show. I don't believe there's any connection to the inquiry that's, that's focused for Your Honor, and that is whether or not there was any extraneous influence during the course of the trial. I'm going to connect with you. All right. Overruled. May continue, Mr. Hopkins. So completed that to people that they, this was on a Thursday, that they probably, if they're going to see the trial, should come on that Thursday because it would be over by them the next day. Would be, the jury would not be out very long. Did you ever communicate that? Email, text, or verbally? I do remember saying that. Yes. And why did you think the jury would not be out very long? Had you communicated with jurors? I had not communicated with jurors about anything related to this trial at all. I've been a court reporter for at least 14 years. I was clerk of court for three. And you just get to where you kind of um, see things happen as they progress. And it's a guess. It's a gut feeling. And that's, that's all that I meant by that. Wrong. Wrong. Sometimes you might know if it's going to be real quick, right? If it was just like a bloodbath and we're talking like 30 minutes or whatever, I've guessed right a bunch of times as we sit here and, and we talk, you know, what do you think is going to happen? 
and I've been so wrong so many times. My dad, who's tried more cases than I'll ever try. Back in the day, trials used to happen literally all the time. And when he was at the state and the feds, you don't know when a jury's going to come back. You don't know what the verdict is going to be. I don't care how many 14 plus three, 17 years. It's not like she knew what it was going to be. Unless maybe you have some inside information. Ozzy, gut feeling is fine. If she has a gut feeling, that's fine. But she very clearly told people to make sure they are here on this day because there's going to be the verdict. And I saw some people from like Law and Crime and Court TV even tweet out that they were one of the people that Becky Hill reached out to and told them she knew what day the verdict was going to come down. Does that sound like a gut feeling? Maybe I'm being too harsh on her. Maybe I'm being too harsh on her. And if I am, you guys let me know in the chat and we'll sprinkle a little bit more grace on. We'll sprinkle a little bit more grace. So that's my bad if I'm being too harsh on her. I will try to keep that in mind the next 30 minutes as we listen to her some more. Yeah. Well, why are you telling this young man who wanted passes for the next day in an email, um, you know, it won't be happening tomorrow. That was your, or did you say, you didn't say, I don't think. You just said, you better come today if you're coming. Remember doing that? I don't remember that. Um, but, you know, if... If he wanted to come, I knew that the trial would be ending shortly as far as testimony. So if he wanted to come, he needed to come. Why wouldn't the jury have been out a week on a six-week trial? They could have. But, but you're, could have. you apparently were telling the press and others that it would be a quick verdict. Were that, you not? That was a just a gut feeling that I had. Okay. And that was my opinion. Your opinion you were right. Okay, and another point. Okay, another point. And I'm going to be I'm gonna be nice as I say this, okay? The clerk of court should not be telling the press what she thinks when she thinks the verdict is coming. The clerk of court has no reason to talk to the press during the trial. Just no reason. Just going to put that out there. I would have a problem with just that. Just that. It's one portion of this case I'd have a problem with if I was a lawyer in this case. Right. The jury was out three hours on a six-week trial, correct? That's true. How much money did you make off that book? There was not a whole lot of money made off of the book after paying different things and um, paying for some expenses that went along with that. But I want to say roughly around 100000 Okay. That's not a lot of money. That's definitely more than we thought and we were discussing before. Definitely more. Right? I did not think we thought she made hundred k on that book because it hadn't been out that long. That's pretty good, I think. It's pretty good. No, especially when you publish your own book. But that was 100000 you made? Uh, with my co-author. Okay. In, in what period of time? Six months? I would say six months, yes. When was the book published? August 1st. Okay. The um, trial was over. That's uh, six months after the trial's over, you published a book, correct? Correct. And then uh, we sure. recently stopped selling. Ladybug, how many people do believe Miss Becky's testimony? Because I think that's a fair question. Fair question. On the book, because of the plagiarism you've admitted to, correct? Correct. And so there's no more money? Correct. Now, um, you also indicate in the book that the Murdoch's had a reputation of um, criminality, I think kind of what you put. Did you not? Well, Mr. Hartpooley and my grandfather and old man Buster were very close. Well, were they criminals? I wouldn't know. You wouldn't know. But you believe know. and you published that the, Mur the Murdoch family had run that part of the state and they've been participating in criminal conduct, correct? You are going to object to general testimony about the alleged okay. story. A little more interesting for the reader. By calling people criminals. I, I guess what I'm saying is this. Were they criminals? You are going to object that to your question. Uru. Were they criminals? I wouldn't know that. Okay, wouldn't. so you either made it up or you're lying about it? About the reputation of people that can't defend themselves? They're dead? You're going to call them criminals? You did that in the book so you could sell a book? No, I didn't do that to sell a book. What'd you do it for? Made it more readable, you said? It, Which sells literary books? Literary ease. Yeah. What? Literary. Literary what? Uh, the, the literary ease that, that you can take with when writing a book. Literary ease you can take with writing a book? You make stuff up? I don't even know what literary ease is, like the ease of reading or something. That's crazy to me. Um, and she's calling people criminals for literary ease or whatever um, to sell a book. And, I, and again, these are the comments and quotes you need to remember when we hear what the judge thinks of Miss Becky's testimony at the end of the day. You can lie? You can lie about people? With, not with that. I, you know, it's, I think the public perception uh, was one that it was very interesting during this time. So yeah. you're, feeding, you're feeding the monster out there that wants to believe bad things about the Murdoch's, and you'll make stuff up to do it. Let me give you another example. I read your book and I found this somewhat humorous, but 
now this is kind of like a, a bit of a smirk line and uh, let me know what you guys think of it. Uh, Johan, Johan, Johan. Uh, yes, I do. So I know what these clients go through and the fact that he stole their money. I have no sympathy for him personally. This is about the system of justice in our country and our constitutional rights. To me, that's what this discussion really is about. Tell counsel did not. Uh, in describing Mr. myself and Mr. Griffin, in the book you say that um, I neutered him. Um, we've both been very interested in what you meant by that. What do you mean by, I mean, neutering Jim Griffin? Mr. Hartbillion, it, it was a book. Did you make it up? I know it was a book. The Bible. Bible's a book. Okay. I mean, just because it's a book doesn't mean you can lie in it. It's, it's just a word that was used. I know that. Uh, don't argue with the witness, but the witness, um, Ms. Hill, you're instructed to answer these questions. The judge is like, you need to answer these questions. You said Harpulian neutered Jim Griffin. Talking about the defense attorneys like that, what did you mean by that? Why did you say that? And again, she's embarrassed, clearly. Maybe she didn't write the actual words and somebody helped her write. It was like a ghost writing. Was she a keyboard warrior or whatever? But like, that's rough. That's brutal to say that about Jim Griffin. No grace there. A little harsh there by Miss Becky. I mean, I just, I don't love it. I don't love sitting there and admitting that a lot of the nasty bombshells in the book or negative comments in the book, piss and vinegar, right? Somebody was saying that was just not true, but you did it. So you could just beef it up. It's tough, man. That's tough. You may proceed. So let me get this straight. The book, and I'll see if I can cut to the chase on this. I can read you chapter after chapter, verse after verse, which is not true. Okay. Not true based on my experience of being in a courtroom and not true based on knowing some of the people you described. You say, you say that is. I object. The counsel is just testifying right now as to his observations. About the book. You conceded there are things in the books that you don't know to be true. Correct. Correct. Okay. You would concede then that you have lied in the book. It's only because I wasn't there at the time. I can't, I can't um, interview my dead grandfather. I can't interview Mr. Buster. There's just things that we can't um, interview them on. We can go by what was written in a newspaper and we get facts from that. And, and take the inference that uh, one of the Murdoch's was a pedophile. You could have printed that, and they're not here to contradict it. You could have printed anything you wanted and made it up to sell books. That's what this, this whole scheme was about, selling books. As you told Rhonda McElveen, if, he, if, if him being found guilty would sell more books. Right, and I, true. I reject the argument of the nature of the question, the compound question, and assuming facts on that. compound question. Uh, if what you're asking is what uh, she told uh, Ms. McElveen, go on and ask that, but don't proceed it with a yes, uh, testimony. Thank the court's indulgence for just a moment. Um, their ex-husbands that you found out about? I have no idea. Well, you wrote, we learned later the ex-spouses hadn't seen each other in 14 years and she had three restraining orders against them. Did, did she have three restraining orders against them? I don't know. That's what she said. Okay. Um, <coughs> did you tell jurors at the end of the trial after President's Day break. President's Day break would have been a Monday, correct? Correct. But before Mr. Murdoch testified, did you tell the jury not to be fooled by the evidence presented by Mr. Murdoch's lawyer? Mr. Hartpoolian, I never talked to the jurors about any of the evidence. If the answer would be yes or no, then you can explain. Did you say that? No. Okay. Um, did you all did you ever instruct the jury to watch him closely immediately before he testified, looking at his actions, looking at his movements? Did you ever tell the jury to do that? No. Did you ever tell the jury to pay attention to Mr. Murdoch's testimony? To pay attention, not specifically to his testimony. I did tell the jury to pay attention. Um, to what? Just generally in the hallway when I was speaking. Not to him? No. Just any witness? Right. Okay. Um, did you... Did you ever warn the jurors the defense is about to do their side? This is right before Mr. Dove, right at the, the beginning of the defense case. They are going to say things that will try to confuse you. Don't let them confuse you or convince you or throw you off. Did you ever tell the jury that? No, sir. Okay. Um, did you ever tell the jury to get emotional? We want to see your face because that is what they want to see. Did you ever tell them that? No, sir. Um, did you ever tell the jury that Mr. Uh, Murdoch was about to testify? I didn't tell the jurors that. Now, did you tell the jury that if they didn't reach a verdict by 10 o'clock, they were going to have to spend the night? No, sir, I did not. Did you ever tell them they were going to have to spend the night? No, sir. Point? Did you ever tell them that they couldn't smoke? No, sir. Okay. You got any other books in the works? No, sir. I mean, doesn't this make a good book? 
wouldn't this make a good book? I think he said, right. all right, I'm going to bump ahead to the judge asking her Pay attention. When you ask that question, did you, did, did you say a bit? Try to influence it. He was uh, dismissed. Uh, sometimes called the egg bureau. Do you recall that hearing? Yes, ma'am. In the hearing, Judge Newman expressed his uh, unhappiness with you for questioning that juror before he questioned her. Do you recall that? I do remember seeing that. Well, then let's go back and talk about that juror. Uh, you on uh, examination in this courtroom. This is the juror that the court would not let Hart Poulihan come and question, which is why I was surprised that a lot of the questions centered around her. And this is the court impeaching things that Ms. Becky just said on direct, cross, and redirect. Problematic brain static. Curious to see if these are unique or if they just came to light because of the publicity. Based on the judge's ruling, we're going to get the idea of why the judge thinks it happened in this case, which would probably infer it didn't happen on the other, on the other cases. Charlotte, what's your opinion on the judge reviewing all the evidence and transcripts before the hearing? This is exactly what a good judge should do, and I want them to do. Now, do we think she made up her mind beforehand? We're going to hold on that. Yay, caught this live. Thank you. I like this judge as far as uh, consistency with counsel, tough, et cetera. But the way the hearing was very chaotic, unorganized, sometimes confusing, should be a new trial. This is the one I was looking for before that said it was kind of a chaotic um, uh, run hearing. You said that she talked about a lot of things to you, but you didn't uh, ask her any questions. But that's not completely accurate, is it? Yes, ma'am, that is true. Well, you asked you ask her direct questions uh uh, and that came out in the uh, hearing that Judge Newman had. You asked her questions before she was even examined by the judge, did you not? Your Honor, I, I did not ask her any questions. She says she didn't ask her any questions, which is exactly what Judge Newman reprimanded her for. The juror was examined by the judge uh, in a hearing. Do you recall that hearing? It's the second hearing on this matter. I do recall that hearing, yes. And the court asked you about, the, the court asked this juror about postings on Facebook, did he not? Correct. And the juror said she, she gave Miss Be Becky my full access to my Facebook. Uh, and I put past a post on it. I've done that for the past three years. Do you recall her testifying in that regard? I do remember reading that. And the judge said, has anyone posted anything on Facebook about you? And the juror answered, I was not aware of it until Miss Becky told me today. Do you recall that? I do remember her saying that. And do you recall the judge saying, what did she tell me? And the juror said she asked me if I had an ex-husband, and I said, yeah. Did you ask her that? I remember her saying this, Your Honor, but I did not ask her any of these questions. And she further says she asked me if I had talked to him about the case or being on jury duty, and I said no. I had questioned her about why she was asking me that. I haven't seen my husband since 2014. Do you recall her testifying to that? I do remember that, yes. And with that, uh, having jarred your memory, do you recall? She's like, so everybody basically thinks that you asked this juror questions. Does that jar your memory? Asking her about her husband and his post? Your Honor, I don't remember saying anything about that. Well, what was the post that you read in the Walterboro um, uh, word, word of Mouth? What, what was the nature? You read that, uh, did you not? I did. What did it say? Uh, my memory is a little fuzzy with that, but it was about a, an ex-husband who found out that his ex-wife was on a jury, and he didn't think that she would be a good juror. And it just sounded very similar to what I had heard the judge and the attorneys speaking. So about. you then went to that juror and questioned her about that, did you not? I did not, Your Honor. Well, she says in this testimony that she didn't know about the Facebook until Miss Becky told me. Was she? What, was that incorrect? I'm not some saying kind of, some kind of conversation went between the two of her for her to know about that post. Correct. That's true. And I'm thinking that it could have been someone. Um, it wasn't me. I just know that it's not me that she talked to about that. 
Well, when the judge, um, the, the judge was uh, questioning uh, the juror about this, uh, she also said that she had three restraining orders against him. Uh, and she also said, uh, I was very upset after she told me that. I have, like I said, I have three restraining orders against him, and I wouldn't have anything to do with him if I didn't have a child with him. But I haven't seen him since 2014. She didn't, y'all didn't discuss that, the restraining orders? On the way from the jury, from the uh, jury room to the um, back chambers where the judge was, she was very um, scared. She was talking about the, the three restraining orders that she had out on her husband at the time that they were divorcing. And she was scared that he would be trying to get back in contact with her again. Well, she, how do you know that? Did she tell you that? She was talking about that on the way to the jury room, uh, to the chambers with the judge. She was talking about that, but she definitely did not tell me that. Like these little, like somebody said earlier, like she's got justification or explanation for every um, question she has. And I don't think the judge liked that. I really don't think the judge liked that. Net woman, while and out tonight. Uh, since all of this information came out after the book was written, Peter, in your opinion, if she had changed all the names in the book and made it fiction, do you think that we would still be having this hearing? Totally hypothetical, just your opinion. It would be a much better argument for plausible deniability for her. And that would make sense with like some leeway that she took to make it a better story. I was making stuff up. It was fiction. I was making them sound even worse. I just wanted people to come and read it. I wanted the spice. That would make a lot more sense, but that's not what we have here. And I don't think that really puffs up Becky Hill enough, which is what one of her goals was. And in, the court, in, in, in this hearing now that I'm looking at, uh, that the court is conducting, she said, they're asking about this Facebook post. And she said, Miss Becky said she went, had went to look for the post again and that it had been deleted. I don't know who she talked to or anything else, but she said, apparently, do you recall her saying that? I do remember her saying that. And the court then said, what did she tell you about that? And the juror said, it was after you let us go on the last break. I was very upset. This is what you're talking about. And she came down and talked to me and said that apparently, I don't know who talked to him, but he, he said he was drunk and he removed the post. Do you recall that? I, uh, well, she didn't tell me that. And I didn't talk with her about that. Well, you saw that post, the so-called apology post, did you not? Right, I did. And you assumed that was a post from her husband, did you not? Right. And then you talked to the juror about that, did you not? I did not talk with the juror about that. Well, who did you talk to about it? Did you bring it to the judge's attention? No, we didn't get a chance to talk to the judge about that. The, the court asked this juror, has the clerk discussed anything about the case with anyone on the jury? The juror said, not that I'm aware of. The judge said, okay, she was just discussing with juror. She pulled me aside when we went downstairs after the last break. I want to say it was after lunch and we came back and that's when she first told me about it, about this. So Becky's denying all this now, right? Okay. That's fine. Whatever. Why wouldn't she deny it right there in front of judge Newman? Like I never talked to her judge. That wasn't me who showed her the Facebook post. I didn't pull her aside and talk to her while all of this is happening on the record. And the fact that she didn't do that tells you everything you need to know and tells this judge everything she needs to know. What we now know was a not a post from her husband, right. but you assumed it was a post at the time, and y'all had a conversation about it, correct? Don't that just not ask, answer the question? Yes, sir. yes, ma'am. Um, I believe that it was one of my staff that she talked to, and but it was not me. Why that she didn't you to. say that then in the moment? And but the juror says, and I want to say it was after lunch we came back, and that's when she first told me about it. She's talking about you, correct? Then we went back into the court, and I never even got to sit on the jury. The judge says, all uh, right. The judge then stops the questioning and she exits the room. Uh, Mr. Griffin, Your Honor, I think that satisfies it. She hadn't talked to anybody, hadn't expressed an opinion, hadn't made up an opinion. She's got an ex-husband and she has three restraining orders against you. The court said, Mr. Mr. Waters, because obviously we're all invested in this. My main concern, I certainly would love to, not love to, but want to hear, you know, what one of these individuals said. But, you know, she answered the questions as she did, talking about the juror. Uh, so, Ivy, I, I have to disagree. I, it's not a witch hunt when they're confronting her with her own words from her book with a record transcript between her and the judge and this egg juror. They didn't even get into the wiretapping with her son. They didn't get into a lot of things that could have made it sound like a witch hunt. I think they're confronting her with some pretty objective things that are straight from her mouth and she doesn't really have great answers for them. So I understand. And again, we're going to try to have more grace on this channel than maybe we've had earlier in the, 
in the video, but I, I would not call this a witch hunt. They then uh, have a colloquy about uh, this juror and whether this was really her husband that put this post in that you talked to her about and apparently talked to the court about at some point. Am I right? That's right. And then at the end, the judge said that he was... Uh, not too happy with your having talked to the juror before you talked to him. Do you recall the judge saying that? Yes, ma'am, I do. And did you pop right up there and uh, say what you're saying now, that you never talked to her? We never talked about it after that. I wasn't in the room when he said that. The judge brought up another thing right after sentencing that I want to explore with you briefly. Okay. All right. One of the big responsibilities of the clerk of court is to take control of the exhibits that are presented in court. Isn't that correct? Yes, ma'am. And there were sealed exhibits presented in this uh, uh, case uh, came into public view. Did you ever allow anyone from the press to view these sealed exhibits? They talk about how the, she allowed to people from the press to seal these exhibits. Again, she says she didn't. There's emails where clearly it did get there through her. She's telling them to just destroy them, handling it horribly like you would just vomit if a clerk of court was doing this in your case with the sensitive nature of some of this stuff that she let go because she was just, again, this is why we don't want clerks of court flying out with jurors to do interviews, planning to write books, talking to the press, telling them when the verdict is coming. This was just another part of that. I'm going to jump through a little bit. We had uh, Mr. J. Bender, then we had the. Were any uh, press people ever allowed to view the exhibits, even the sealed exhibits uh, that you had on file? No, ma'am. No, ma'am. What was the methodology for uh, allowing them to uh, examine the exhibits? How did you handle that? I wasn't there a whole lot with when we did this every night, um, but it's my understanding that the people that were involved with the exhibits and especially the court reporters. Um, and there was a certain time frame that they were allowed to take their pictures and everything was, um, all, all of the pictures were looked at by the court reporters that were there and the ladies from court administration, along with someone from my office and Mr. J. Bender to make sure that everything was done correctly. What I'm asking is how you handled having them, the press view these exhibits. If I remember correctly, the press, we had certain designated, um, and so you think that the, the you're aware of the fact that some of these are uh, uh, something more apparent. And about having so many people watching and listening to me as I read the verdict. I was mostly concerned about Alex being found innocent when I knew in my heart he was guilty. I had despair that the goodwill of the Murdochs had built up in the community would influence the jury. Uh, you wrote that, did you not? Yes, ma'am. She felt like she knew he was guilty. She wanted him to be guilty. She was afraid he was going to be found innocent. And that's a big deal because that tells the motive of the jury tampering contact that the defense is alleging in this case. So you had those feelings well before the verdict was announced in this case. You had some definite opinions and feelings about what the verdict should be, did you not? I did have a certain way that I felt. But that I wasn't never... any, that, that's not any poetic license, what was said there. That's how you felt, correct? Correct. All right. Good question. Those are my questions. Uh, anything further from, from the state, Ms. Waters? Yes, sir. I want to see these. You're getting them back. Well, I would say the court reporter didn't mark it on the. This is when he shows her the email about how it got to some Japanese company or something. Again, making sure that she's giving it to um, the press and just how intertwined she is with the press. What is it? Uh, she remained with you documents in this case. Um, this Miller just uncovered an email relevant <coughs> County and denied doing certain things. I think you're going to find her testimony extraordinarily instructive and educational. I, and it shouldn't take, I would be shocked if it took 20 minutes. This well, in light of the answers she gave to my questions uh, uh, and some of yours uh, in that regard, I'm going to allow it. Now, I want to know what else we're looking at here. Um, <coughs> How much time is one of the uh, uh, 
particular alternate juror, uh, we've just been handed uh, this particular uh, affidavit in any deliberations and cannot uh, testify as to any effect on the verdict, which is the ultimate inquiry before your honor. Um, and so we would we would object to uh, this particular testimony uh, as far as it relates to the alternate juror. Um, here's, here's the one that gives me some heartburn. You can help me with this, please. Uh, I, stand I want to leave this in there because the judge said this gives me some heartburn. And by uh, the rulings I have made that um, uh, only jurors can be uh, questioned about the effect on, on their verdict. Uh, and uh, that is why I did not allow the testimony of the egg juror uh, in that regard. You and he is now offering this testimony uh, and its testimony of certain things that were said to the jurors as a whole, r rather than just to this particular juror. Uh, and uh, I would, as I say, I would ordinarily not allow this, but Ms. Hill uh, testified several times uh, uh, during the course of her uh, uh, just concluded appearance that she never told any jurors anything along the lines of what has been uh, 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 asked here, particularly uh, uh, the comments about uh, they're going to say things that will try to confuse you or throw you off, things of that nature. She, she was asked about that, and she denied she ever said anything like that. So, so basically, the judge is going to allow these witnesses for impeachment purposes because she was not planning on allowing them. That's how bad Becky Hill's testimony went, according to this judge. Rain, I saw this in the beginning, and I wanted to say you're welcome. I wanted to say you're welcome because that's the worst. I did not see the press conferences, Tiffany. Um, I'm probably gonna have to do another video on those because I wanna I wanna listen to Rhonda's direct examination. That's gonna be the first thing we do, and then um, we're gonna listen to. I'll probably just summarize what the uh, alternate juror said, and then we'll get to the judge's ruling here, and then I'll get to a lot of questions. I've got a lot of questions to answer. I would doubt. All right. Don't think I'm allowed to plug that, but um. You um, have been at the cork for 16 years. You're up again this year. Now, do you know uh, the cork of, um, well, back up just a second. Do you hold any position with, is there a state organization of courts of court? Yes, sir. I'm actually the president of the South Carolina Courts of Court Register of Deeds. Okay. And that means that of the 46, there are 46 of y'all? Yes, right? sir. Yes, sir. And you were elected to be the chairman of that group? President of that group. President of that group. Yes, sir. Now, um, do the, do, are there certain rules and, and, and constraints that courts should operate under in terms of dealing with juries? Yes, sir. And... Um, is there training for that or is there a book for that or how do you learn that? You have the clerk of court manual for one that's on the judicial website. You also have the law books that have it in there. There's actually two um, separate forms, SCCA 237 and 238 maybe, that has regulations on it. And then we also have in the handbook that, or not handbook, but in the program within the CMS system, they actually have rules and stuff that you can go by as well. Now, as a clerk of court, um, yeah, are part of your duties to deal with juries? Yes, sir. To, to, once, I mean, we, we understand there's a jury venire that's brought in at the beginning of a term, and then individual juries are picked for both civil and criminal cases. Is that correct? That is correct, unless it's a non-jury trial. And then there's just a judge, like we're doing here, right? Yes, sir. And um, in the process of picking juries, do you assist as court of court, when I say assist, who who actually um, picks, the, picks the jurors out of a hat or however, whatever the process is? Well, actually, the first process is you draw a jury by computers through the CMS system, and then summons are sent out. And then once we come to court, we usually do a roll call. We see what everybody's doing, what their jobs and everything to help the attorneys to decide which jurors they would like to get. They have so many strikes, et cetera. And then you call the names and they have the strikes and then that's, that's your jury call. And, and then the, the judge will seat a jury in a jury box, like, although I've never quite seen a jury box that looks like that, but a jury box in a courtroom, right? That is correct. Your jury box in Barnwell County is little, like two rows of seven or eight people. Well, I actually have a jury box on both sides of, of the courtroom because I have the grand jury on one side when they convene and then I have the pettit juries on the other side when they convene. Okay. And... Um, the jury, they're sworn by the judge and then they're put in the jury box and they begin to hear arguments and testimony and jury charges by the judge. Is that correct? Well, actually, sir, where we do it, the court usually swears them in with the judge presiding over the whole thing. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Once that jury is sworn in, what is your role in terms of dealing with those jurors individually or as a group? Are you allowed uh, to talk to them individually, to pull them out, to, to converse with them about your opinion about the case? To pull them out of the trial while we're going on? Yes, ma'am. No, sir, we're not. Um, if they're on a break, et cetera, or if they request to see someone, then we manage to... I'll, actually, I'll go with the door open. I, I'll say, which one of you needs to see someone? It might be the judge. And I said, hold on, and then I'll go get my judge. And so we've got a juror that needs to speak with you. And do you converse with jurors exactly about the merits of the Becky did not do. In case by the merits, uh, whether uh, someone's guilty or innocent or whether a plaintiff or a defendant should win in a civil case, do you ever do that? No, sir. About the most only thing I ever do is go in and count them and tell them I can count up to 14 without even using my toes. <laughs> and then I might get their lunch order. That's it. And the doors are usually open when I'm doing that. And you have bailiffs that sit with the jury? And, and, and we just got a taste of what it's actually supposed to be like, okay? Not that Miss Rhonda is perfect or anything like that, but just to show how frustrating it would be if Miss Becky did this in your trial. I'm sorry, but like, if there are any lawyers in the chat, you can back me up. You would hate it if you're a trial lawyer 
and your clerk of court acted like Miss Becky when you expect them to act like Ronda. That's the problem. Or sit outside the jury they room. They sit outside the jury room, and usually there's one beside them in the courtroom in case somebody needs something. But usually I, I'm, they'll catch my eye or they'll catch the judge's eye and we'll get something handled. Okay, so did you have, a, have any contact with the clerk of court of Colton County prior to her being elected the clerk of court of Colton County? Did you know her before she was clerk of court? No, I did not. <laughs> did you come to know her when she was elected clerk of court? Yes, I did. And was it a pleasant relationship? It was. And how did you come to be, and to cut to the chase, you ended up being in the courtroom during the Murdoch trial for part of those six weeks, is that correct? Yes, sir. How did you come to be there? Um, when Becky and I met each other at a conference, Clark Courts conference, where she was discussing that she had that trial coming up, and I knew that she was relatively new, and I said, I'll offer to come help you if you would like. And I think she ended up talking to Judge Newman about it, and they both said, yes, it would be good that I was there. Okay, because you, you tried a murder case a few, about two in the past, correct? Yes, sir. Okay. And um, so did you go? It was one of the lawyers on a murder case that she was the clerk on. Help uh, Becky Hill. Try that murder case. I did. I couldn't go for the first three days because I had court in Barnwell, and I told both of them if I had court going on in Barnwell, I could not be in Collin County. Okay. We're going to talk about this, Kathy. There are a few questions on it. I'm going to get to it at the end. Now, um, to your knowledge, had uh, Ms. Hill ever been the court of court that managed a murder trial prior to this? Not that I'm aware of, sir. So this was her first murder trial, as far as you know? As far as I know, of this magnitude, I don't know if they had one before then or not. Okay. Now, when, when did y'all, I mean, initially, what were you talking about in terms of logistics and how you did it and all those sorts of things? Yes, sir. Um, during that, before the trial, before you ever, we ever picked a jury, um, did, she, you, did she ever discuss with you that she was going to write a book? Yes, sir. And she wanted she to write a book. Yes, wanted sir. to write a book. Did she indicate what the book was going to be about? About the trial? About the Murdoch trial? Yes, sir. And... Did she discuss with you, what if anything did she discuss with you about how she felt the verdict should turn out to be in the Murdoch trial? It, 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 these are the, in reference to the book, what would help the book? Um, a guilty verdict. She, and yeah. tell, us, tell the judge and, and me uh, what exactly she said to you that you remember. Um, this is prior to the trial. Okay. Well, first of all, she said we, we might want to write a book because she needed a lake house and I needed to retire. And um, then for the conversations, a guilty verdict would sell more books. And we looked at that we, that's just before, even in December. And when when did she ever say that again to you during this, the, the week she spent there? Several times. It could be said it was, you know, amongst friends in her office or we might be having dinner, that kind of stuff, but that's about it. That she needed a guilty verdict to sell more books. That would be the best way to sell books, yes, sir. The best way to sell books. Now, <clears throat> during this during this process, uh, did she ever express to you an opinion on whether or not, in fact, was Mr. Murdoch guilty of the murders of his son and his, his wife? Yes, sir. Tell me, tell me what she said and if you remember when. I don't exactly remember when. I know it's over half of the trial had already happened, but the evidence was coming forth that it looked like he might be guilty. And she made a comment that he, guilty verdict would be better for the sale of books. Okay. Now, um, as a result of a conversation you had sometime during the trial, I don't want you to, to relate to me that this, that what was told you. Did you have a discussion with the clerk, Becky Hill, uh, about her being with jurors on her own? Yes, sir, I did. One morning I showed up, up to Colony County and I was um, told that she had taken a juror home the night before. And I was in the courtroom and I saw her and it was between the pews and where the back row pews are. And I mentioned to Miss Becky, I said, please tell me you didn't take a juror home last night. And she told me, she says, I did, but I didn't talk about the case. I had a bailiff with me. Mr. Bill was with me. I said, Becky, you don't do things like that. I thought we had stopped everything. It was, wasn't far enough along to really um, cause a major problem where I would have told Judge Newman. But I thought we had to understand that you did not. So that's my one little, and I'm nervous to beef with Rhonda. I'm nervous to beef with Rhonda looking at the chat. Everybody loves Rhonda. I do too. But if, if it was really that big of a deal, which I would have thought that was a big deal, maybe she should have told Judge Newman that. So I, I do think that she probably should have told uh, Judge Newman that. Spend time along with, the, with the jurors. Okay. Now, I'm going to <clears throat> read you some statements. Um, well, first of all, did you ever heard, hear her say anything in front of you to a juror about whether or not uh, on the merits of the case, that is, whether or not he was guilty or innocent and what you should pay attention to. Did you ever hear her, what if anything, did you ever hear, hear her say to a juror or in the presence of a juror? Anything? No, sir. Okay. But let me ask you if you've ever heard her say these statements, and if so, to who? Um, don't be fooled by the evidence presented by Mr. Murdoch's attorneys, which I understand. Uh, I mean, do not be fooled by the evidence presented by Mr. Murdoch's attorneys. You ever heard her say that? Your Honor, this time I would object. Uh, this witness was specifically called as a Rule 16.3b um, extrinsic evidence. Uh, I think we've covered uh, the two grounds. Oh, that the prior Mr. Murdoch's attorneys. Yes, I did. And was it, who was it said to? Well, it was said to me. Okay. And sometimes it might be a staff member in the <clears throat> office or someone from the media there. 
But other than that, I didn't hear her say it out there in front of any jurors. Did she ever um, say to you or to other people around you, I'm not talking about jurors, watch him closely, talking about Mr. Murdoch, um, this is just before he testified, look at his actions, look at his movements. Did you ever hear him say, her say that? Yes, sir. Okay. Um, did you ever have any conversations with the, the uh, bailiff, Mr. Bill? Yes, sir. Did he ever discuss with you uh, the clerk's contact with jurors? No, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Did you ever hear her say um, that the defense is going to try to confuse the jurors? Did you ever hear her say that? No, sir, I don't think so. Okay. Agree, Jeremy. All this is easier in hindsight. <laughs> now, let me take one last area. <clears throat> let me see if I can simplify this. There were, <clears throat> there was a setup in the courtroom. <clears throat> Pardon me, I had a little frog in my throat. Um, and I call this, of course, was up here, Greens. There was an area over on my right facing the judge. Um, and then I think you were located in that area right between the judge and that area. Is that correct? Talking about in the wheel area? Yes, ma'am. Okay, yes, sir. Now, For the most part, now, sometimes I was out there with the, um, the screen right. in the gallery. Right. Um, but there was a screen in on which you could see not only what the gallery back there could see, but the, the, the images that only the jury was supposed to see that were under seal. Is that correct? That is correct. Now, um, there's a woman named Rhonda Ryder, correct? Um, Rich. Rich. And tell me who she is. At the time, we did not know who she was. The first time, the first time they were there, we didn't know. Then she came into Miss Becky's office. The story where Becky let somebody... That was uh, a writer forwarding her book, sit in a place she shouldn't have been able to sit so she could see evidence she wasn't supposed to be able to see. Again, Becky just doing things to promote her book and to gain financially. I'm going to skip ahead a little bit. The body cam that she could see. The I don't even know where she goes to church. Her access to she made some jokes about her being a Sunday school teacher or something. I'm good, sir. Please call me Rhonda. All right. So then we have Creighton Waters who comes up, crosses her. Uh, basically, she didn't hear or see or know anything about Becky talking to jurors. The redirect, basically, he just reiter uh, he reiterates that Becky was alone for the car ride, um, and that's basically the end of Ms. Rhonda's testimony. Then Juror 741 comes, who's an alternate juror, confirms all the Becky stuff that Poot wants her to confirm. Um, I kind of want to show the cross real quick. I, I want to show Metters crossing because... His exchange with the judge was kind of funny. All right, we'll watch a minute or two of this. And I'm just, Ms. Arthur, and laid you and Ms. Hill made the above statement warning that the defense would try to confuse us in the presence of all of the jurors as we had assembled in the same jury room. We was all in the same jury room. We, you, you, she would be outside the door and we would be in the room and someone would be standing beside her. We was all always all together when she came. And uh, do you think that was unusual? No, because I mean, she, I guess she didn't want to walk back and forth the room to room. No, in fact, what she said, do you think that was unusual? Yeah, I did. And uh, if you get emotional and see his face, uh, they want people to see your face? Because at the, yeah, I can't. Wait, wait. 233. We, we were all, like I said, we were all meet. And I guess what I'm saying is you're in two different rooms for a while. Not like that. You talked to Mr. Arpoot? No, I haven't talked to him since he came to my house. Or any of them before today? No, I haven't talked to him since he came to my house. Talked to anybody else involved in this case before today since then? No, he was talking to my lawyer. Okay, and who was that? Sean Wilson. Okay, and when had Sean Wilson talked to you? He's been my lawyer. Since when? Since 2021. Okay. When Mr. Wilson talked to you about this case and what you told Mr. Harpootman and Fire to. All right. They apparently don't object to this, but I am very uncomfortable with your asking what her lawyer told her. I was just looking for timing. Well, she's told you a couple of times that he was her lawyer since 2021. Well, say you're a lawyer for this. So, what do you mean for this? Well, like being a juror. So, being a juror. Yes. The judge was very involved in this hearing. I didn't have a. He was always my lawyer. You didn't hire him for this. No, I didn't hire him for this. But he had talked to Mr. Harpootman about your affidavit, your testimony today, hadn't he? Was that a yes? Yes, he was looking over the paperwork. He's look, he was looking out for me because he's my attorney. And when was he looking over the paperwork? Oh, I don't. I, could, I guess they said September, October. I don't. I don't. I wasn't really keeping up with it. With okay. it, to be honest, because I'm. So do you know if he's talking to Mr. Harpootman this week? Yeah, he talked to him today. Talking today. We was together. Who was together? Me and my lawyer. And Mr. Harpootman? Yes, when I went to go sign the affidavit. Okay. Where did you sign it? At his office. At his office. Mr. Harpootman's office. Yeah. I was supposed to. I would object. Okay. This meandering. I mean, there's no jury here. It's you. <laughs> and I don't know what. Yeah. All right. I think he's going to move on. Yeah. It was just. She's like all this meandering. There's no jury here. It was just kind of funny to see them interact with each other. Um, some more. But let's jump here to the judge's ruling. And before we get to the judge's ruling, I'm going to skip where she talks about procedurally what she has done. Um, in the case already and what the burden is and closing arguments state said, here's the burden, no prejudice. 
Uh, everybody's on the same page except for Jersey and Jersey was kind of going back and forth, flip flopping and confirmed that the affidavit that the jurors pressured her is why she made her decision. And that's totally appropriate. That's called jury deliberation. Jim Griffin, Griffin basically said, even using your standard, both prongs are met because she said Becky influenced her. Um, even though we think the other standard is actually correct. Miss Hill is not credible. Um, even you, your honor twisted her up. I believe he said, um, so after all those closings, then she says, I'm going to be back in 15 minutes and let's see if I can find some of the questions here. Don't you think the judge came back quick with a decision? Yes. And usually that's an indication that they already had their mind made up. Now, I don't know that that's the truth. That's just usually an indication of what people think. Charlotte says what the judge says at the end makes me think she ruled early. Wonder what ruling would have been if Poot didn't push that affidavit because I think it met this green standard before the judge's more question. I don't know. I, I don't think Poot pushed that as much as Creighton Waters did, but um, was there was another one I felt like. AK said either today. Oh, whoops. I hit the wrong button. Uh, either the rule of law is a thing or it's not. And today it felt like it wasn't. All right, let's listen here and then we will hit a myriad of questions. So get your questions in because we're about to hit the Q&A. The fact of the improper comment uh, or question by the clerk of court, Rebecca Hill, to juror, a juror or juror. And two, or question by the, clerk, by the defendant, specifically that the Hill improper comments uh, in, uh, to the juror or jurors influence the juror to vote to convict defendant Murdoch. The facts. Did Clerk of Court Hill make comments to any juror which expressed her opinion of what the verdict would be? Ms. Hill denies A, and so the question becomes, was her denial credible? I find that the Clerk of Court is not completely credible as a witness. Ms. Hill was attracted by the siren. She finds that the Clerk of Court was not completely credible. I will tell you, when stuff like that gets found on the record, it's a career ender. We've had this happen to law enforcement officers in cases, and it always seems to come up in any future cases and even past cases. As a, and so the question becomes, was her denial credible? I find that the clerk of court is not completely credible as a witness. Ms. Hill was attracted by the siren call of celebrity. She wanted to write a book about the trial and express that as early as November 2022, long before the trial began. She denies that uh, uh, this is so, but I find uh, that she stated to the clerk of court Rhonda McElveen and others, her desire for a guilty verdict because it would sell books. She made comments about Murdoch's demeanor as he testified, and she made some of those comments uh, before he testified to at least one and maybe more jurors. Did Clerk of Court Hill's comments have any impact on the... So before we get to prong two, she absolutely finds that she had improper contact and proper communication, said those things, did those things she's accused of, even after she denied it. She basically made a ruling that prong one was met. There was improper contact, contact, and that's incredibly important. Incredibly important. I'm gonna save. I'm gonna save my final thoughts until we hear her answer on prong two. And maybe more jurors. Did Clerk of Court Hill's comments have any impact on the verdict of the jury? I find that the answer to this question is no. Each member of this jury took their involuntary assignment very seriously. They obeyed the instructions of the court. They obeyed their oath. These good and decent citizens of Compton County stood to their duty and rendered their verdict without fear or favor. It was a difficult task. Eleven of the jurors very unconditionally said uh, they either heard no comment or if they heard a comment, it had no effect. One juror was ambivalent in her testimony. She was then examined on her previous affidavit in which she said the effect, if any, that she had was pressure she felt from other jurors. The cases are myriad that pressure from fellow jurors is a part of the normal give and take of jury deliberations. The court is not to inquire in any way about what is said in those deliberations. But the juror who was somewhat ambivalent said on her oath at the time of trial twice and said on her oath before me in these proceedings that she stood to her oath. The clerk of court allowed public attention of the moment to overcome her duty. I have read the entire transcript of this lengthy trial, not an easy task. I have studied in detail all of the authorities cited. I have in independently researched the case law, learned treatises, and scholarly articles on the subject. 
Although there is certainly a split in the federal circuits and in the states on the standard of review, I simply do not believe that the authority of our South Carolina Supreme Court requires a new trial in a very lengthy trial such as this on the strength of some fleeting and foolish comments by a publicity influenced clerk of court. This is a matter within the discretion of the trial judge that the authority of our South Carolina Supreme Court. All right, so I'm going to pause it and we're going to replay this one part because this is this is something else I don't I didn't love. It's like a couple of things I didn't love the judge did today, and this was one of them. Court requires a new trial in a very lengthy trial such as this. She does not think this requires a new trial in a very lengthy trial just such as this. Where does the length of trial come up in this decision making? Where does the length of trial come up in being a factor? Where is the length of trial in the prongs or the tests or anything that's supposed to come into the analysis at all? I hate the idea of a new trial. I hate the idea of wasted money. I hate the idea of wasted time. We talk about it in Coburger. We talk about it in all these cases. Let's get it done right the first time. Well, some fleeting and foolish comments. We're not going to waste all this time and money trying this case again. That just is not it. That cannot be a reason to deny an, a, a new trial for a man whose life is literally on the line. I had a major problem with that. On the strength of some fleeting and foolish comments by a publicity influenced clerk of court, this is a matter within the discretion of the trial judge. And I am the trial judge at this moment. I do not feel that I abuse my discretion when I find the defendant's motion for a new trial on the factual record before me must be denied. And it is so ordered. I will file a fuller order which denies this motion on the grounds I have recited on the record before me as a trial judge uh, and the authorities that have been cited by all parties in this matter. To that end, I will hold the record open. I direct that within four business days of receipt by the attorneys in this matter of a transcript of these proceedings, a proposed order by the state denying the defendant's motion for a new trial with citations uh, be sent to me and to opposing counsel. I will allow the defendant four business days from receipt of the state's proposed order to lodge objections and or submit an alternative proposed order. Upon receipt by uh, the court of all proposed orders, I will finalize this record, submit a written order. And let me say this, uh, and I shared this room uh, for many years, and it has been... He just then says how amazing all the lawyers have been, all the briefing, all the arguments, like is said so often at the end of these cases. So here's what I think. Here's my overall thoughts here, and then we're going to just smash some questions. At first... I was a little frustrated. It didn't feel like the judge was even giving much consideration to this when I felt like this is so horrible. And there was a, somebody, a Canadian lawyer, um, criminal lawyer for legal aid in Canada. If this happened in one of my cases, I'd be absolutely livid. This would and should never fly. 100% agree. Paul Young's is in the chat. Thank you for gifting some memberships, Paul. Guarantee Paul would be pissed about this too because I've seen his comments and questions regardless of what anybody thinks about Murdoch, if a clerk of court was doing this stuff or the judge made findings that she did this stuff, it made no sense. I felt like the judge made up her mind the first time she ever um, encountered Alec Murdoch. But then, I was wrong. I think the judge was open-minded. I think she did evaluate it and make the call based on how she read the case law. I feel confident in that. I think she was fair in how she questioned everybody. I think she should have allowed the clarification for Juror Z. I was even a little surprised Creighton Waters. There's a question coming up I'm going to answer about, did Creighton Waters have to act like this? I think he should not have objected. He should have let Juror Z come in and testify. But at this point, wrongfully, it seems like everybody just wants this conviction to stick as long as it can, regardless of due process. That's what it feels like a little bit. But I think this judge's plan, and I don't love it, but it wasn't to railroad Alec Murdoch. I think she believes she picks the right standard or she believes that's the standard, the case law that she thinks his ruling shows. And if she's wrong, that's for somebody else to decide. And Ray kind of made this point. I think Justice Toll kind of punted this. And she punted it in a way that she made factual findings that if the correct standard or the standard I believe is the correct standard is used, he's going to get a new trial. But instead of her 
one individual judge, somebody that's been a Supreme Court justice, an appellate court judge, instead of one individual judge making this call, and it may be a bit of a gray area, punt it to a higher court where multiple judges will look at this, multiple law clerks will do the research, they'll come together as a group, and they'll see what the right answer is. Now, I hate to think of that. I hate to think that we're just punting and kicking the can down the road and going to waste more time and money on all this. But when she gave her verdict, after listening to the way she questioned witnesses, what she allowed in and what she didn't allow in, I'm pretty confident I agree with Ray here that Justice Toll, she made the decision she felt comfortable with, but ultimately she wanted somebody else to make this decision. She wanted a higher court with multiple judges to make this decision. And Ashley, do you believe this will get overturned? I think this question is going to be asked multiple different ways by different people. I think it should get overturned. Will it? I find myself in a position that I don't really want to guess what is going to happen in the Murdoch saga. I don't know if it's South Carolina. I don't know if it's Colleton County. I don't know what it is, but I'm not going to make any guesses because I obviously don't understand how things work over there. Tiffany, is it truly fair that the judge referenced in her ruling that the federal Supreme Court's precedents had already determined juror misconduct should be based on prejudicial implications versus verdict implications? I don't know if she quite said it exactly like that, but I do think that, again, this is the point, Tiffany. I think she wants other higher courts, state or federal, to make this decision and for it not to land on her shoulders. Nirvana said, I agree with the judge. To retry him is seriously expensive. Becky has been publicly shamed. In my opinion, let the appellate court sort it out. It going up to the appellate court and then coming back, back, coming back down just wastes more time and resources than just hitting the new trial now. But we'll see. Joe, can Alec Murdoch request to extend the stay of them appealing the verdict last year if they file an appeal on the outcome of this hearing? I think they can appeal this hearing before appealing the whole trial, but I'm not positive, so don't quote me on that. Kevin, my sibling who works for the Lightning, that's awesome, her coworkers will throw snowballs at her from the Zamboni. Perfect time of year in Florida for it. They don't melt immediately. Uh, we are originally from New England. That's awesome. That's, that's a great comment in the midst of all of this. Thank you, Kevin. Sandy, did Alex give up his right to appeal as part of the plea agreement in the financial case only he only gave up his right to appeal the financial crimes, not this not this case. Joe, sad to think. I wouldn't want to be a juror in South Carolina. I probably wouldn't want to live there either. I'm an angel, but I don't know if I'd ever get justice there. I don't love how this all went, if I'm just being honest. Ashley, this was all so bad in the name of justice today, except for Poot and the judge calling out leading questions that were asked. That was funny. Play that clip. I don't know if I played that one specifically, but I did play some of a the sparring between Poot and Judge Toll. Francis, hi, Peter. Can you please look at the mom of the Oxford shooter trial? Yes, I will eventually look at that. This took up my whole day today. Carsto, Peter, in your opinion, what are the odds of winning an appeal? It's always so hard, but I do think this one has a better chance than most to win on appeal. K-Rab, on Emily Baker's stream, the poll after Judge left to think about her ruling was 70-30 new trial. I'm shocked. We were shocked when she gave the ruling. This isn't about Murdoch. It's about every trial from here on out. I agree with you. I was not surprised at all. My tweet was, this should be a new trial, but I don't know if it will be. I was not getting the feeling the judge was going to grant a new trial. But that's really interesting that Emily's chat felt like that because Emily even says like she is a prosecutor. So sometimes, you know, she's got the prosecutor vibes. So to think that 70% of her chat thought this should be a new trial is wild. John, throw up a poll uh, in this chat. Did the judge get it right denying a new trial? I'm just interested in what this chat thinks. Rain, I feel like it was. it is hard for some here to appreciate how important Alex's constitutional rights are. I didn't until law school. Alex could be our father. Regardless if he's our father, these laws and rights could be applied to our father. Shelly. How far does this mighty Murdoch dollar go on his defense? Is this still covered? Thanks, Laura, you know, in chat for engaging in great content. So it depends on who you believe. Some people think he's got money hidden somewhere. Some people believe they're doing it pro bono for publicity. I have no idea. Katie, 
Did Creighton Waters have to argue the way he did um, to defend Becky Hill? So this was the one I was talking about where people wanted to know if he had to. No, he did not have to. He could just be like, yeah, we agree. We need a new trial. Um, but I think he did fine and he did the right thing. I think he did a really good job today. The only thing I would have done differently is I probably would have said, sure, let Jersey come in and clarify her testimony. I don't want to hide behind something that was said wrong or misconstrued or misunderstood if she wants to come and clarify and she's here and there's no real reason for her not to. John, the American public is the one and only judge. Swaying the public is the worst or what could be considered a worst action slash crime. The American public is not the one and only judge, unfortunately. <laughs> not unfortunately, I guess. Fortunately, we have judges and juries. Consistent insomniac. Peter, if a single juror is influenced by the clerk, isn't that grounds for a new trial? I think so. It seemed like the judge would have felt that way too, but she did not find that uh, juror's testimony credible enough or solid enough to say that it did this. Problematic. Can lawyers request to not have Becky on their trial as clerk for in the future? I would be so ticked if I was the prosecutor's office. I agree. And they can probably request it, but there's going to be more questions like this coming up. Andrea Burkhart posted that the clerk can't be removed really in this situation. So it's really interesting to see if she's just going to keep her job and how that works. It's going to be wild. And I, I trust Andrea's research, but I haven't looked it up myself. Dana, I'm coming in late. Don't, me, uh, don't, mean to nag, but please cover the Jennifer Crum Crumbly trial. It's such an important trial and really want your feedback. I feel naked watching a trial without you, LOL. I am going to look at it, Dana. I am going to look at it. Britt, one thing I really didn't like today and EDB pointed out is Becky Hill's lawyers kept talking to the state. It seemed not right. Thank you, Netwoman. Yeah, she prepped with the state and sled. I mean, give me a break. That's what rubs me the wrong way. I just don't like that. That's what makes me think it's like the system, the judicial system there and not just one bad apple in Becky Hill. I, I don't love that either. Michelle, is she going to get in trouble for lying straight to the judge's face under oath? I think there's going to be some future litigation, maybe criminally, maybe civilly, involving Becky Hill. Sylvia S. So Becky's actions were acceptable. I do not think anybody said they were acceptable. Does she get to keep on clerking? It seems like the answer to that for now is yes. It's not a good look. Consistent insomniac. Peter, if she influenced at least one juror, isn't that the cause for a new trial? Because it wasn't their opinion alone. Can she face criminal charges? I think the answer to the question number one should be yes. Can she, can she face criminal charges? Yes. Will she? I don't know because SLED is apparently the one investigating. She didn't seem all that nervous up there on the stand to just deny everything outright. She didn't try to plead the fifth. John, Becky pooted. Yes, but in the 2024 court system, this realistically goes nowhere, unfortunately, right? Can you give a percentage? I don't know that this goes nowhere. I think because SLED is involved, it may go nowhere, but I don't think people are just going to be quiet about this, but we'll see if they hate Murdoch that much that they're like, just we'll let this one slide. Death's Angel, if this was for your family member in this case, you would want a new trial. Uh, yeah. You would be so angry and after today even more. Absolutely. Smell you later. These people are so inappropriate. Staff, jurors, conspiracy theory, but AM is an insider and I feel like he knows how crazy these people are. Maybe that's the back he wrote on with all of his shenanigans is he knew everybody was corrupt. So far, did the judge get it right? 62% say no, that the judge made the wrong decision. Sandy, she thinks she can lie because she knows it's all hearsay and her words against them. She believes they will believe a court officer over a juror. Well, guess what? The judge did not believe her over the juror. Marsha, how ironic is it that AM is known for fixing juries? For instance, his father and his brother, or his and his father's behavior at the hospital after the boat accident. Just an observation. Yeah, people have been saying this kind of from the jump. Um, but it is a little bit ironic, although just because he's trampled on people's rights doesn't mean we, as the public, need to trample on anyone's rights, including his. Let's do it the right way. He's sitting in prison for 20 plus years because they did it the right way on the financial crimes. Let's do it the right way here as well. k -Rab, she's still the clerk of court in elected position in 2020. There doesn't seem to be a method of recall. Yes, k -Rab. It's wild. It's wild. Jennifer, this judge is protecting the record of our beloved Judge Newman. Shoot. You know what I didn't play? Where was it? Dang it. How did I forget to play the part where the judge said, 
Um, the evidence in this play, in this case, was overwhelming. The jury basically got it right. It was an easy decision, mic drop, at the end of this hearing. Agreeing with Judge Newman, agreeing with Becky Hill, agreeing with the prosecutors, agreeing with everybody except for Murdoch. She had a little mic drop moment. She took a shot that she did not need to take. And I think there's a question coming up about that. Nirvana, a big if. If a second trial for the murders finds him not guilty, will Big Red receive her life insurance and properties? Oh, potentially. Potentially it could change, yes, the probate process. Nick, I get the prosecution, I think you mean prosecution, is arguing for the state, but at what point do they have to stand up and say this is injustice? Did we reach that level of injustice with Becky Hill? I'm not a prosecutor anymore, but I feel like we did. I feel like if I prosecuted this case, as much as it would just kick me in the gut, I'd be like, this is not right. This is not right. But I don't think they have to. In their position, I think there are arguments on both sides. Jeremy, yeah, I feel she's happy to set this up for being resolved federally or lower. I agree. I agree. Uh, smell you later. Not an expert, but this stinks. You're a smelling expert. Under your scars. Lawyer, you know, the courts are so backed up and seems it's been for things like this. Becky should be fired and a new trial. Nah, thanks for your coverage. Netwoman. When they polled the jurors after the guilty verdict, that one juror said it was her verdict. I've seen cases where there was a mistrial because a juror said they didn't agree. Absolutely. And that's one of the important things. Juror Z said, yes, it was her verdict. She was asked a million times if she talked to anybody outside the court. She was asked a million times if it was based just on the evidence and the testimony. So I'm okay if Judge Toll comes to that decision. But just let her clarify if Judge Z or if Juror Z wanted to clarify. I'm okay with the judge finding her not credible. That's what the finder of fact does. I disagree, but she's the one making the de decision within her discretion. Uh, Kara Strong, did anyone else pee a little when she scolded someone? I did laugh a few times. Brew Berries, people are too emotionally tied to this case. A retrial for AM does not equal not guilty. It just means they proved it the right way. Imagine this stuff happened with Depp or Rudolph or someone people sided with. Azam, this is past your bedtime now, right? Uh, yeah, but I'm in between California time and Florida time. How much coffee have you had for this dream? Not much. I did drink some tea. Sweet dreams later, Peter. Thank you, Azam. Jeremy Morton, I think she applied the standard that she thought bound her from the South Carolina Supreme Court and may be interested to get it resolved with Remmer's guidance. I agree, Jeremy. This was very well put and succinctly put, almost like a lawyer, like a lawyer should do. Diana, reading the trial, the judge thought he was guilty. Correct. And that's okay. She can think he's guilty. It doesn't, that's not the question. The question is not, judge, do you think he's guilty or not guilty? It's, did these things happen to necessitate a new trial? Janet, Will Folks said Becky Hill has been charged for moral turpitude, and then the government, one, would suspect her until courts decide her fate. I'm not sure. I don't know the answer. Air dry. Air dry. <laughs> I believe the House bill is still in committee on the removal of elected official. Oh, that's interesting. Christian, appreciate all you do offering your honest opinions and staying up late, Peter. Completely agree with you on this one. Thank you, Christian. Yes, and it is past my bedtime. K. Rab, clerk of court term in South Carolina's four years. She was elected in 2020. Should be re-up for re-election this year. So maybe it's over sooner or later regardless. Mark, welcome to the membership crew. All right. All right. That's all we got. 6,000 plus people. Let's get it over 5,000 likes here. Hit that like button. We stayed up late. We hit a ton. I know I couldn't hit all of it. Didn't have eight hours. I appreciate you guys so much. Um, but I've got to go because I'm tired. I'm a little hungry. I'm a little thirsty to drink something, eat something. Jet lag, not really jet lag. I'm going to be able to go to sleep here soon. I'm going to eat a little snack. I'll be in bed by midnight. All right. I appreciate you guys. Have a good one. Thank you to everybody that came. Thank you to everyone that joined as a member. I am out of here. Thanks for watching another episode of The Lawyer You Know. If you enjoyed the episode, please hit the thumbs up and share with your friends who may be interested here on YouTube. And don't forget to subscribe. You can also follow us on Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and TikTok. And don't forget to check out The Lawyer You Know podcast with new seasons dropping every quarter.
If you have a case you want to talk to us about, if it's a personal injury case, wrongful death, catastrophic injury, car accident, or slip and fall case, please email us at lawyerunow at gmail.com. And of course, all these links I just mentioned are included in the description below on this episode and every episode. So until next time, this is Peter Tragos, the lawyer you know.